The advantage of disease is a non linear existential risk encompasses and outweighs all other threats. That's Pamela and our start 15 races. Probably the time same activity, past our civilization, a classic race, starring a junior career, and then the results of the first of all, here are the review, 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 reports indicate those can happen. Probably an increasing due to unsustainable trends to a tendency to get excluded past because about probably 5% is the reason our theme is believed that it had been impacts, cultural reference to it, it impacts have been dominated by groups seen in that's here society, but that's how to move back into civil views. This is my different focus on scientific evidence of pure human social impacts. That's why there's a viable community to life on Earth from an ethical perspective. No possible beginning cannot be yet, even a small part of the many a traditional war race, including more such degrees physiologically with parents who are poorly equipped to respond to psychological denial, ignore questions of probability, curve, and the approach cannot be trial and error instead of seeking from an apparent action, barely cause more light to come in light risk, light center, experience collective your response will be ill calibrated, and the ill calibrated thresholds become invisible. They occur part of the future, even a current action, some analysis system, human enemy, a developed path along a path which we fought along, and then that find morally repelling the consequences, not clear cut, valid, demand, value judgment. That would have any connections on shared injury and poverty, and unless not sufficient threat in humanity without a system collapse, panic for worldwide, but have a will be the greatest cause mortality, history, public history, and fatalities, real talent, and they probably follow a proper law with a small exponent, they are heavy tail majority will. Adapt to the single largest pandemic, though, as such, and we will have greater probability of usually seeing all the features on existence in nature, and the incurable, and the fatal, and the crazy, extremely infectious, and long incubation periods of the pathogen combined these and influence to demonstrate any genetic test of death, but would I be assumed that we'll, the world have changed the making past comparisons, probably modern transform death, population, and infections to spread rapidly. The ripple effect would include political act, disruption, economies, dislocation, geometry, the opposite, and the never been back to the human society, and the extent that recovery becomes impossible via four human days of uh, comes to other risks, such as climate, or further pandemics, unpredictable, as you notice, this creates an invisible brink for new outbreaks. That's Rosenberg 17, the whole Mussarsi, and Marcus, Bird, Luce, and Blue, Lassie, Murphy, Murphy, Valley, you know, the whole range of factors that are going to be able to go for epidemic to pandemic. These are no, not going to be this is going to be probably the temporary run against this. That death toll may be even higher. The uh, spread of all capitals in 60 years with mobility, population pressures, and climate change. Burnout is wrong for diseases that start in the U.S. That's um, bar around 16. Aggressive um, stress use transportation is capable of collecting exposure to one the entire population dies. But the increase in global transportation and civilization may approaching a critical threshold. The circle of is not a good guy to keep on the transition to extinction. It's not a sense of details. I feel more long range connections closer to the U.S. has highly connected to respect to upper of as much greater risk group unstoppable. The magnitude of the threat justifies an escalator clause for utilitarian calculation. This avoids abuse as well, ensuring just outcomes at the tail end of the risk. That's Kirkwood 9. In pandemics that will harm large numbers of public health demands and country, the use of social limitation worth the scenario that writing's use is not a form of strong rule considering the extreme position of modern form of means or action to so there must be an escalator clause in the event of an enemy existence. The threat, the greater the force of use, the greater the moral impetus. Our pandemics are fundamentally unlike this, but it's great responsibility. Some of us who can reach the body count and good public health in one view and comes with others in extreme cases, such equal layer of dictates a uh, heightened obligation intervening at the point of care is key. The cause of illness are multiple nodes. You can uh, eliminate them. That's Hirschfield 17 solid. Uh, scholars have a several argument in place. Objective medicine research have been able to spread equal community and virulence. Uh, variables in the social environment play a role, but overlines and structural bonds of races. We have variation experience all evidence with one a pretty term not false final narrative. Bagel is found in level structures of the whole 21st century. My asthma and force on scientific theory that contributes a little to. Understanding raising the threat level is important to get a national and international responses to disease, and when combined with our public health response, it is demilitarizing. That's 80s and 70s for the last year to get scientists under the alliance by the health security card to achieve a ridiculous world organization of our school leadership and resource health is low priority and rented to the most nation building because health imposes national threats, power to the black, conference, state center, and there are 70 critical agreements and issues of Syria, Iran, and top of the foreign policy hierarchy, but Syria not, we're not one dimensional and such are protecting individuals as much as they want to have within Syria, seen as equal president of the human rights and sovereignty's responsibility language that security discourse health capture attention, but it's not the only tool of life, neither do they displace other arguments of operationalization of an issue of some of the Discussion far more than framing a small part of the discourse compared to a consuming discussion of institutional design. The key priorities need to be international initiatives to achieve health goals. Specifically, preemptive securitization is key, but the 1AC and current security discourses will only be operationalized during a pandemic, but starting early primes the public for preventative care and an efficient response. That's Cook 10. Pandemic would be only sexual and efficient access to the military, political, and social. And these are very trying makes it possible for disease to disseminate. As early as 2000, the government was beginning to identify the pandemic's the threat. In spite of mm, concern, the public is more concerned about cost, cost, availability, and recognition. Attention seems to mention when other radio cases increasing rapidly, disease seemed to uh, contain perception of the highest and early stage. Outbreak, there's been a lack of acceptance of the securitization of the valued actors' engagement. Uh, secondly, the anticipation of future scares and the actors moving, guys moving, and just starting to mention that. Let the issue reach out there. We're going to have our actors and folks in the intent of security writers that's of this nature of in the future. Assembly a precedent that um, this could eventually be scared as this action opened the policy window that allows the limited policy making that could be useful in the future. And we can uh, through preparation for dealing with the benefit of the before we begin to increase the accuracy of results. It has to be undertaken. Even the most extreme forms of securitization do not cause military interventions. That's so glad to all desperate. That's how it's not always required desperate measures. Those who mm, open it as well, advocate and recognition of those that offer high health and a dead deal development oriented recommendation. Include access to medication, not of the opposite for securitization, is including military imposition of isolation of quarantine. The U.S. Uh, UN declared HIV a threat at the same time advocated human rights approach and a foreign counter example. The, the notion that framing an issue in security terms involves extreme, extreme results of the claimant characters it may eventually lead to extreme measures, even if it, 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 this was not the intention, is at best questionable. Infringing on individual autonomy is justified in this context, even if no other is. Disease is a negative externality because no individual internalizes the cost of contagion. That's Widows 13 autonomy has become.
And don't have the choice of not show up other concerns or charge of paternal somebody gets a sense of other clubs of buggy that can every ethics social clubs are wholly unsatisfactory house comments to be impossible to choose and never could be could be could never be constrained all regulation or constrained choice that suggests that unethical is nonsense clearly coming as are also important unless coming as are protected individuals will suffer is not sustainable for each individual to use the percentage of resource they do and for all to have medicine group medicine group goods are valuable because they benefit individuals the assumption of the evil sanctions are a tyrannical regime has become better of here which is legitimate extent illegitimate conscious when the individual actually benefit actually benefits immunity our global goods use these bring no respect to reporters so will be more effective the poor disease will be more vulnerable. Ultimately, all of such goods are supremely valuable in human survival. Ultimately, in the court of they should be prioritized under any ethical framework. Must collective goods are protected survival in human species. Will we uh, threaten the center of fear, of fear of paternalism is small when compared to the overall cost concern about uh, threats to the individual expanded so far beyond harm that is absurd? Worry about curtailing choice or undermining the survival of all. Starting with an understanding of subjectivity as relational rather than atomistic, creates an ethical obligation to mitigate healthcare inequalities through a single payer and refuses individualist neoliberal logics. For is 17, autonomy mm, seen to find the base of persons relationally instead of hard by ethical discourse notions and accessible individuals to get any home device. We think of ourselves as separate we are, so we don't want what you affects the whole world. The choice not only affect themselves, but also affect the community and individuals. Some of the friendly egalitarian left with the market oriented directing people maximum liberty in American bio ethics air in the other that autonomy is the productive business world will go where the those who challenge may be motivated as a negative social and psychological effects related to atomistic extensions of modern liberal societies have taxes contributed to alienation of the political unbound of green will lose a crime increasing inequality that's going to come in social and social liberation and communal life. The US must be charged that common good will be with any more of an universal health coverage that principles were emphasized more on autonomy, less even a strong individuals, communities do not really think autonomy is all a matter of respect for person reflect what is um more important. Important, far better than autonomy plan. The United States federal government should establish a system in which healthcare providers are paid for their services by the government. Solvency coverage reduces mortality and financial precarity. That's Gaffney. 18. Coverage um, has a productive effect. Three causes are experimental. There's a different, a different studies. Um, no salon should less in association with an odds of dying ratio increase insured versus uninsured raising 0.97 in an organ study was underpowered to coverage. A beneficial impact on patient finances care. Access use of self and health well mortality. 20 million uninsured reduces unacceptable, unacceptable of unnecessary death and suffering. The nation state is the only way to provide care effectively. That's Ruger 14. Meaning healthy to rights function the national system, the nation state has a set of goals for raising and redistributing revenue, employing policy, and enforcing policy through legal system, the nation state's are best position to provide health systems and services, healthcare, and proximal and controllable health determinants, but every person must be able to must be able to obtain care so which of a health system is critical. Targeting demands for single care, the federal government builds cross-cultural solidarity and prevents our gains from being rolled back. That's day 17. The challenge is built in a durable organization that can effectual change single care can help students increase social social organizing capacity will uh, build work compile uh, class power her long term struggle, single approach selves can be awareness to win camping as a tactic in the service of a larger strategy build the internal structures and organizing skills more new generation of grassroots life activists. That was single payers, which is essential focus in fighting. We build mm, the solidarity across, uh, across demands and power for the working class. Everyone needs healthcare. Everyone is been hurt by insurance, free public education, foster shared self interest. The foundation of a solidarity built to last. Single payer solves disease. One is preventative focus, decreasing financial and procedural barriers to seeking care makes patients more likely to report illnesses and centralizes planning. That's lady 14. Make a distinction between integrated resources and the guarantees covered. The dedicated funds go single. A single payer goes to factor in their purchases. A response payment makes this go by private corporation only couple there. But their shareholding and understanding actions based on ability to pay technology. You don't let it getting a mission happen. Never day able to reveal speed on that accuracy. That's only integration plan resources. And authority can protect from pandemic central planning is key to focus on preventative medicine and research and solve globally because research propagates that's can 17 diseases emerge in the US and the developed countries public health is practically not in front of that positive assessment reacts to average out the taking repression or approach the US needs to go better to reorder healthcare properties that practice from public care about funding a public health system including factor called the emergency needs research and vaccine diagnostics to develop with a change that's your global health income and equals to tight infectious disease expanding a global epidemic globally second is early detection encouraging patients to seek care makes outbreak detection faster that's key to contain emerging outbreaks in the US and breaking the chain of transmission that's con and 17 HA with the 51 million I'm sure and sure people really seeking care once they take it, they get less attention. There's become a danger for the uh, public's less intact, small small highly communicable. When anybody's going to expose others, setting up a pandemic that peaceful healthcare unless able to handle crisis, the only way to prepare for a pandemic survivors here is single payer, no circumvention. That's Brock 17 nationwide in terms of what would save billions on the admin cost rather than 51 separate assessment than post on scale, single pair can be run as a semi autonomous utility with minimal interference, no rationing. Best study that's blood and Thomas 17. Single up here, so single, they'll have a limited wait time. So, in Canada, this week, success tackling wait times in a primary area. So, study found all promises of primary radio provide radiation therapy but within a benchmark time travel for next day appointments as well as specialized test costs, hinder timeliness where people choose not to seek care or fill prescriptions. The American approach reduces weight through gaps. Um, so my first question is, why vote app, even if the app is a good idea? Like, even if the app is a good defense of a policy option, why vote for that? That is good because debate is a game where we defend things like that. We're going to sure. make arguments as to why that's true. Secondly, we have arguments both in the day evidence and in cards that we'll read that says that having iterative debates around the imperative for single payer healthcare builds organizing capacity beyond this okay, individual so two debate. questions here, I guess. Why does, what does it mean for debate to be a game? What does any game look like? It's just like there are rules, there's one winner, we compete okay, to win. Okay, are games intrinsically valuable? Like, should I care if the game is bad? Should you care if the game is bad? Yeah, like, should I care if the game doesn't work well for you? 
like you you can care about the game, but at its at the end of the day, it is just a okay, game cool. until you so change from that abstraction. Two questions here. One are like organized twos, which is organized or mobilized to what? To achieve single payer or like anything? Our evidence says that organizing around single payer can help achieve it, but can also help achieve broader victories against the conservative agenda that currently controls the government. Cool. And I guess my second question is, what is the timeline of solvency between the iterative reading of this app? and the skills that produce these movements. We will get the skills in three years and four months. It's like obviously there's not a specific timeline as to when we like right. so get the skills or pass single pair. That like, is clearly a reactionary way to view politics. It's like if this doesn't happen at the end of this two hours, it must be totally useless. No, but clearly I'm asking you to articulate a timeline for your impact, which I think is reasonable. So which is how long should I expect before policy debate allows me to like effectively create movements? We don't think that individual people create movements. We think that within a relatively short time okay, frame, so having iterative demands about single pair is are, why is are good to build organizing bad. capacity. Like clearly it's, I mean it's bad, like we're not gonna be like everyone dying would be probably good, but like what makes it bad? How do we know that it's bad? Because people want to live given their Given the fact that collective so suicide is just like is not occurring, people want something. It's just like people most most cool. of the time people enjoy life and would prefer the choice whether to live or die, prevent suffering. Yeah, but it's just like if people want something, then cool for them. If people want to live, I don't really think that I have the agency or the authority to tell I them guess, that they shouldn't do that. Sure. Uh, my last question then is: This argument of subjectivity is relational. What does it mean to have a relation with something? A relation is just like a way of interacting with something. That, so like literally if I interact with anything, that's like, the key to producing No, activity. our card is more specific and says that so people should be specific. themselves, people should be themselves as not constituted wholly by the, themselves, but as constituted by the social factors of other people and broader societies. So like- Okay, so, so if clarify, so by social factors, I guess, how do we understand what those social factors are? I just wanna say like the one AC's application of this theory is just to disease and in that unique context, that just means that your biomedical self is constituted through your interactions with other, i.e. I can give wheel the flu and that would affect wheel's body. That is a sure. relationship between cool. the two of us that matters for how we make our yeah, decisions. Yeah, cool. The one seal should be next to Chase. Yes, for my wife. <laughs> is it because you're trying to get her to laugh with you, or are you trying to be like, I want to pair these overalls? Can I tell you something worse than all of that? Yeah. Taking a picture of his overalls killed my phone. <laughs> it was at 10%, and then it died because it's <laughs> overall. <laughs> Overloaded the phone. Dang. It's just real rough out here, isn't it, Sean? It, it is. Oh, always a forever, you know. <laughs> I, I'm well aware of how rough it can be. Is there like an outlet somewhere down here? Or a teleport? Um, I can possibly get one. Still tired. Oh, you might have it. Oh, I just didn't know if you had one like under you or something. Have no, you I haven't. Was there any? Is that a no? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nah. There is a box down there, um, but you'd have to. You're right. Oh, that's hard. Very fun. It almost kept you away from it. It's charging in the back. Yeah. I bet. Let's see what the people have. I thought Josh started. Uh, there's a live stream with a chat. Dang. But uh, the people don't have very much to say. Do I have your time? Yeah. Shit, I don't think so. Let me see if I have my time. I just sent you the link though if you want to join in on the live chat. Do you need it for the one see it? Huh? No, get the one see? Yeah, we did. Oh, okay. Y'all have a timer? You can borrow one, yeah. Sean, yeah. is that a child? Oh, no, oh, sorry. I thought that back of the chair was, no, I thought the back of the chair was like a, uh, what is it called? A stroller for a minute. And, because from where I'm sitting, the back of the chair looks like it's like a, the top part of a stroller. And then there's those, and then the, look, the little, <clears throat> black bag right there, the handles are sticking out, so it looks like a, it's just a perspective thing. You'd have to stand here to see what I'm saying. No. Anyway, I thought for a moment there was a baby there, and I was unsure what was happening. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move away from the baby. <laughs> people are pretty weird about their phones, but. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you remember you have to charge it? Yeah, I remember. Okay, does everyone have it? I don't know if Sean's about stuff. Yeah. Okay, people have it. You can start whenever I have like 30 seconds. Talking about no, go stand where you're supposed to stand for the speech, Jacob. We're trying to get speaker points out here. Okay, okay, let's go. <coughs> I waited for the sneeze. Bless you.
Chief Seattle may or may not have said the young men, the mothers, the girls, the little children who once lived and were happy here still love these lonely places. And that evening the forests are dark with the presence of the dead. When the last red man has vanished from this earth and his memory is only a story among the whites, these shores will still swarm with the invisible dead of my people. And when your children's children think they are alone in the fields, the forests, the shops, the highways, the quiet of the woods, they will not be alone. There is no place in this country where a man can be alone at night. When your streets of your towns and cities are quiet and you think them empty, they will throng with the returning spirits that once thronged them. The dead have power too. The ghosts of the dead haunt this space. However, decolonization is not exorcism. It's saying after gratuitous violence of genocide marks the entryway for settler being the throng to Dan Chan and more force on the beating tell to heart of the settlers. Sky keep this in core or young and 17. Cyclone like thought out of theory offers a way to critique this one's chronology for to politics kills in the name of life. This uh lots of spoilers as a form of life and modality of corporal person who contract his colonial sense pure ways and unconscious dead try conveys the sense and the force found that haunts the dream of a common world. The objective is to come to terms with the attempts to abolish to drive out the source of the greatest mass murders in history. Genocide first people took place in the name of progress to unification with claims of a shared futurity that's fulfilled with a destiny required on the negation of other civilization policies failed to convert aboriginal forms of life. The federal government takes by its tactics, these failed the federal government and tits by again the doubling down as a primary trace of the death tribe because the aim of fully eradicating elders can only feel the trajectory of aiming turns to circulate to come the death circulate the aim of the objective authorized to escalate the violence name of closing the open the drive aims the return to a moment unity of language enters in, uh, into the symbolic this economy signifies often through modality of difference by association meaning is contracted through quickly voice verbal concepts that fix ideas through the signifiers uh, that would structure entire fields of meaning subjects are formed by their entrance into the system and formalized in the symbolic this is experienced by subjects in the loss completes it the less lack occurs in the imagined formalized in the symbolic this experience the subject as a loss which he or he, which he can never return to which he Perpetual yards which switch which, which you perpetually moves the content the is a quality point through which the field of politics is to trade durable content that organizes the meaning of nation, citizen, sovereignty, subject code, Indian children, and say subjectively signed by open source of the political overturn of the world of the law. The subject is hailed into circularity and misrecognition with death that is that is inescapable. The Indian person imagined always had been outside the theology of his or understanding of difference to the rubric of historical progress remains central to the liberal neoliberal political thought, economic practice, and policy, the interval of call to die recapitulate subjectivity the trapped argument within the field of signification, the dead set work in subject relations and sutures and renders legend. Of their life is a spiritual speech with that it not make sense for in chronological subject. The configuration is a chronological one, the political time of the Indian versus the political kind of nation. This is a registered time that agrees both response to forward moving the structure of the political policy, circular time of Homer's nature. Ditching is a category that here so in the to limit times like primitive or anachronistic imaginary can do really distinguish the difference. The temporal structure of empire is a future that's never fully realized, but also unfolds the ever between new world life swords and magic rising unified center. So in this temporality, it secures its uh, history with its on the state of our bodies. There's that source of jet violence held that the temporal condemn liberalism on the ongoing racial violence too, which is to a political, uh, imaginary, multicultural, supposed racial politics is predicated and foundational to these politics and traumatization of the social contract overcoming the state nature enactment of the new world. This same reputation actually conceal these permissions of persistent kernel of originary injustice from which liberal democracy empires constitute a healthy call denied like the Indian others to detriment of political expression of white futurity and gesture towards a good life. The Indian residential schools are biopolitical institutions that participate in the production of politicized life, leaving this cruel grounds to now to feel the child body from the imminent hours, risk of assuming ghettoized indigenous bodies into time zones out of joint with cellular colonial time describing future TV about runaway aboriginal children single the possibly the will ever becoming escape the ice mountain like a bright the mythical death that returns to the tenuous precarious location and needs that the bodies of indigenous childhood and the discourses of national health insurance and care represent the newest invention of genocidal biopolitics wherein the native body is made forced to live so that it might be reabsorbed in the cellar body politics simultaneously completing the genocidal project while indigenizing the cellar max 117. In you do not experience cellular state interventions into making no such in the 20th century sanitary based tuberculosis treatments and cannabis suicide prevention programs as forms that care, but rather ratios of their identities, cultures, and histories in the psychic lies about the colonizer during the colonizer by political commandments. They alive at all costs, haunted by sorrow on the part of the colonists to murder the colonizer, also by the occurrence of the colonizer, but in what appears the most denied public health programs are in fact genocidal cellular humanitarianism, which is cellular state interventions, and just how people experience the after effects. We should not be surprised that many have experienced the psychic life, those not simply blended like healing interventions and ongoing cellular cellular violence to reinforce the political status quo, seeking reparations, but harmful and self Changing their victim status, exacerbating everyday forms of suffering, can give the illegal cellular coins of overdetermined indigenous social suffering, indigenous killing and co-opted. I say we work to cellular humanitarianism, cellular expressions of sympathy for indigenous suffering and the interventions they justify serve to simultaneously enable and conceal ongoing indigenous dispossession. The specter of extinction is a result of cellular anxieties arise not only from cellars and skill for destroying the planet's ability to sustain itself, but also from the cellars' need to strengthen solidarity and defer confrontation with native genocide. This is daily in 16. 
A heat metaphor of the cell of future's extinction. This concept allows the death of cellular subject structures compared to the elimination of ancient people or even the end of humanity itself operates as a mechanism of disavowal where extinction is a metaphor of any that enables survival along the cell to reckon with the disaster of the cellular colonial power structures. The cellular subject by definition when it comes from elsewhere but it tries to make place from the settlement near a bus and plan of the gap with the bridge of cellular transform from outside indigenous that the transformation must remain considerate and clearly desired to be a home necessary books to the of the native whose existence which cannot be disavowed described the cellular's form so first a temporarily cellular colonial narrative so case for its description of the repetition of pollution narrative by tending trauma cellular decolonization it's inconceivable because sellers like the metaphorical tools to imagine their own device. Sellers do often try to imagine their minds. They do so in the rear of paradoxes and they're finding all true with those whole radical materiality decolonization is undone. Even as it invoked the quasi biological context, extinction off sellers and chance consider disavow their own device just as they consider disavow the violence of their origins. If your only annihilation serves as a power ideological function, and seller communities working to foster racial solidarity, suppress the same legitimate violence against indigenous people who are former resistance formation, then the sellers who fear the narrowest to seller extinction acts of ideological justification, screwing the brutal cause of the frontier behind a mask of white vulnerability, biological or teenage. Extinction errors rely on more or less conscious slippage between the seller and the human. This slippage replicates a core aspect of pure psychology by normalizing whiteness as equivalent to mean. Analytical effects are mediated by gender insofar as extinction errors invoke issues of biological reproduction, community protection, violence to differentiate and immediately reify masculine and morals. Extinction core trope through which the seller futurity emerges. Uh, yes, read this card. Gotcha. The discourse of disease and mandatory enforcement is haunted by a cellular colonial legacy of my violence of making live this in Nebula. In 17, I wrote out why singularity by the face of martial law by exhibiting public health colonies and military occupation with the a kind of credit protocols through about politics and technical that uh, make live and let die die through cellular colonial history, which disease itself and complicit native of many, many people. Wartime mobilization made necessary for military government to include native life in the administration. The state target the optimal health of uh, top of the health of lives, ex- even as a participant perpetuate militarized racial logic and cellular colonial structures that naturalize white possession, scientific rationality, about all following definitions of life, death produce, no of relative advice of racial, uh, racial colonial military projects. The expansion of these public health programs where the forms of U.S. cellular colonies and militarization militarized strokes of collective energy and sacrifice have the mass past and present U.S. cellular colonies and people were made to live as biological resource for the security by tally of those in the American military continent and part thus the make live of her paradox becomes a tool in the death domains that fortified the virgin U.S. military and control over who should be killed and who should suppose what was allowed to live in the U.S. military and prioritized serving English population control and mobilization through public health. This project was always in place and created and encounter irregularities, contradictions, or resistance of do you want me to read the Wilderson card? Go yeah. Down. Okay. Mark at resistance. The call to ethics and relation is haunted by the bloody body of the native who produces the common in which relation and ethics can be Wilderson and TNA Simulacs, Lost Simulacs, Iowa Simulacs, and Jinsai Pin Simulacs produce a possibility of a narrative by the impossible narrative of Jinsai Princesses and Savage Topple. The question to elaborate more or less ethical and narrative limits regarding Jinsai often managed to train more times and disavowed with the political school movements. So realist demand it gives me a big fat woman to cover all the cracks in my shack. Goes to the heart of better reflection and will be restored ethically. Through the destruction of white bodies, his corporate the indigenous person consumed, and God to make his settlers corporate movement once when he's been lost, not just his life, but power, but his language or land, but the raw material of the flesh, most like grass who Indians, he knows precisely when we went into the seller's body, thus he precisely knows where to represent the whiteness, begins his ontological consolidation, they involved by training the acid body, needing to flesh the moment the white body completes itself and proceeds to lay the groundwork for interest at all. On top of the questions by nature, that's below the settlers, so let's get right when knowledge, what is not ontological whiteness is secured through his cultural and economic gender identity, but the fact he cannot be known position by genocide, it's not that movies demand is of certain ethical rather than so pure in its ethicality, the questions that threaten the quotini nation, which majority contrades ethnic demand is far too ethical. In the end, we are unsatisfied with calls to sovereignty or land return to the empty signifier of decolonization, which seems to be the only phantasmal call to hold this state demand from the other who will finally free indigenous people from genocide. No, the alternative is no alternative. It's a radical demand, the alternative to be condemned, be held accountable for its past, be forced to confront the genocide, which makes it possible that hope or addiction, eat, tuck, and see, we want sort of the haunting is a relentless reminder, reminding that will not be peace by settler society. So the assurance is an innocent reconciliation haunting. It's both a general individual that haunted, but so are society's haunting doesn't hope to change people's perception. Nor does it hope for reconciliation. Haunting life precisely needs refusal to stop. Haunting aims to wrong the wrongs. This is Henderson at 15. Sellers must enter a legitimate charge of daylight like, panic by ongoing genocide. So these part of possible under they threat explode the Imago cellular close in this explosion petition by revelation and porch violence required to make cellular possible. Sellers are forced to see a breach inside of Murdongo causation more difficult to stay safe with the matter inside of frivolity. Cellular reaction that these people fit with an ego of its response to the person to a complete version of this press desire to new ideas, cellular coin context. Sellers often suggest aim to create a scene on how Gomer writes his explosive challenge on the DPU, but this whole true to sell eyes. Well, the causation must include an analysis of dominant substance will include subject cellular allies must also cultivate the way cellular subject feel to be totally dis- discovering the intimate of the core of the cellular subject involves such a central case. I also begin to prepare to the subject still to try to have a weapon thrust that goes to give us a very great crash to take that long hold of the city of the white. Mark it, white. At some point, can you send that much? Right? Yeah. <clears throat> I can actually, I'll send it out during this, yes. Cool. Uh, what evidence is there for a death drive that makes settlerism ontological or unconscious? So we would say twofold. First, our young evidence analyzes history the way in which there's a repetition compulsion, i.e., the constitutive factor, which in settler colonialism is constituted by disappearance, right? i.e. the disappearance of the native. The so way that's just kind of like there are repeated examples in history. Yeah, so we say there's a bunch of- Settler colonial violence. Why does that prove it's unconscious or psychological? 
because a lot of the time it's not based on a conscious motion, right? Well, I.e. the sorry, rota, why? the rota uh, kind of hell is paid with good intentions. This is kind of basic level claim. You can keep talking at abstractions and like random so why? averages. But I like, can take this. Yeah, actually. Nico, so is your sure. claim just like how do we know that the death drive exists? Because like let's how do we know that it exists and drives an ontological form of violence? Work two things here. So first. Right, uh, you're gonna be like, history examples aren't sufficient. Our argument is that history proves a teleology, a, like a teleology and kind of overarching. How could history theory. possibly prove a teleology? It is past anecdotes, not sure. Sure, so our argument is one. that, yeah, you know how you probably think that like the sun will rise tomorrow? It's because it's always risen the day before. It's called inductive reasoning. So we think that a series of examples okay. have made a claim that we can make one. of the That's future. two. What's the, sec the second part of like, why does that drive unconscious stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so a couple things. So our young evidence analyzes that there's often moves to be made whole, right? Like we try to fill in the lack. Our argument is that settlers have attempted well, to do that through the process I mean, of genocide, but they constantly fail. Okay, so this answer depends on there being like a lack and there yeah, being a meaningful if gap you're in the analysis like, between them. Like, the language we have a lack in psychoanalysis? Yes. Cool. My question was about empirical data or support for any of that. Empirical you data. have none. Uh, the Maxwell card is about the Canadian government forcing Inuit people to undergo invasive treatments for tuberculosis. What about offering people the option to get health care if they have a disease erases people's cultures? Dude, did you not listen to your 1AC? Your app is a defensive intervening in autonomy based on disease. Okay. How you does literally that, have a card that says well, how, does that, how, does that, how does that erase people's talks about how does it erase Can you give, can you give a specific partners. example of how that erases indigenous culture? How does that erase indigenous cultures? Two claims. First is you made the claim that the state has an incentive to intervene if someone chooses not to get health care. So our argument that instance, so say someone chose not to get single payer, right? Your evidence pathologizes and says they're to blame for the epidemic. Well, I mean, if someone has a preventable disease and then spreads it to five other people and like gets everyone infected, are they not to blame? Our argument that says that's pathological that forces indigenous it, it people is. into Western medicine systems okay. because they're like, A, uh, you're to blame for structurally induced illnesses. Like, sure. The Dali evidence you read says that settlers fear extinction. Most of the people who would be affected by a pandemic level disease would be poor non settlers in the global south, and they fear extinction. Twofold. First, is you're inevitably going to be like, disease doesn't distinction. That's our point. The way in which you naturalize disease, extinction is something that happens to all of us, destroys human civilization, i.e., what your evidence describes, is the move that abstracts the way in which both that right. extinction is constituted by violence, but also we'll justifies right. more violence. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That was a one. I know, the young evidence is too long, I'm aware. I thought that I had highlighted it down and I was like, Sorry, mm -hmm. normally I'm the first person to get up and leave, like during like judge press. Oh, and weird. They actually left before, and I didn't. Oh my god, yes, very weird. Yeah, I had a good, no. Anybody got pins? Yeah, we got a bunch of extras. You got a color? Can you just throw it up? All right. Any? Oh, what? <laughs> I'll set future timer.
Thanks. You can keep it for the one and a half. Thank you. No doubt. Okay, has anyone else seen like 90 million cockroaches around here? Like dead ones? Because I see two right here. And I saw like four the other day in the stairwells and stuff like that. Oh shit. And I don't know, they just like recently sprayed or some shit, but they need to get there. You would think they'd have someone come and sweep a little bit, you know, check it out. Because my ass not about to pick up dead cockroaches, I'll tell you that. That's not what I'm about to do. Mm -hmm. I'll die. Yeah, head not out of the no, it's, it's just as you walk around, look, just look at the corners of walls and stuff like that, you'll see a bunch. They're all around. Anyway. Cool. Uh, it'll be the page. Is there like an app overview or anything? Yeah. Is it long by chance? Like, pretty long. Right, I'm not going to do line by line for the one on CE, so like, you should... Like, I'm not going to line by line their cards or whatever. So if you want to just slow it straight down, I think that would make sense. All right, everybody good to go? Mm -hmm. Cool. Disease causes extinction mutations in the nose or imminent survival of humanity will be determined by our healthcare and response infrastructure. Your single payers keep because of uniquely cements prevention and detection. They have no argument for why a single payer would be bad, merely indexed of the universe within which it operates. But that distinction is artificial because single payer makes the world materially different and better. Even if it's imperfect, that outweighs probability times magnitude. Existential threats are infinite, even at low probabilities because of irreversibility. And that inverts their invisibility. Arguments that tail end of risk probabilities is systematically dismissed due to the incapacity to conceptualize extinction, especially for pandemics, because analysis inappropriately extrapolates empirics. Morality can never outweigh value frameworks, even if subjectively appealing or not universally held. The harm of killing those who disagree is indistinguishable from their warrant for why morality would matter in the first place, which is agency. Extinction is a floor for value because it lets everyone live to fight another day. It also inverts the warrant for why their impact matters, which is ultimately just that avoidable suffering should be prevented, which the affirmative addresses on a much broader scale. Let's the panel and our strong evidence. Violence and trauma are bad in the abstract, but they do not outweigh extinction through their mere invocation, even if some violence is a gratuitous. That does not make it automatically worse. Settler colonialism itself, as used by the negative, is an abstraction, but in reality, it's not an entity with causal power, but a set of political relationships assembled through the manipulation of material resources. Papa 17 series study. Has to be as specific as possible. The question of theoretical parameters of good and evil at a global a level and across history may be fueled as the present function of a concept. It's not always determined by fast use of original purpose of sanctity. A created a job rest may play to a different function, a different social concept, modernity, and liberalism may not always function as ideology, as ideologies to, to the same degree, nor uh, does it make sense to claim that they always will have domination and exclusion. Our local diagnosis and remedies must also have to be local. We uh, need to be careful when we shabby from a context of the West Western Slavic theoretical parameters and also must provide a basically critical of Western ideas beyond the fact that, uh, that they are Western or come from the oppressive. Not all Western concepts and uh, standards and categories are oppressive. Even the most non-Western people, even native thought, that can become an ideology. So dangerous to draw on the assumption that this is danger and decolonial thought seems unavoidable as long as they make sense of the coloniality access to relies on binaries. Decolonial thought has been critical of banishingism. There's no, no a doubt about the good intention but center versus periphery. Util is only appropriate at the highest risk levels, which solves the majority of their offense, balancing at lower threat levels uh, and makes justice overriding unless at the expense of species survival. That's the uh, Kirkwood evidence. The alternative is ineffective in the face of this threat. Neither analysis of settlerism nor of the case can on its own disrupt functions of power. The cracks described by their Henderson evidence might help imagine how violence could change, but uh, because violent interactions are material, not rhetorical, remedies must also be uh, theorized on that plane. Zach's 16 law is constantly changing theories so the uh, political discourse may have the surgery to unjustly interrupt unjust, unjust, unjust practice. That is the uh, right discourse. Well, the problem is changing leads to everyone in the public social magic versus feudal appropriation. It's not half the power to move the multitudes who do not read or listen to it. Even multitudes who inspire the action of the false is likely to result in lasting change without the support of powerful wonders. There's often a uh, lack of translation to reality. You trickle down good ideas, theory, self learning but it lacks in purpose. But even very good uh, discourse about justice cannot be relied on to attract implementation in real life because there's not been sufficient virtues to translate ideas in the academy for those who make policy when opposing views and make yourself the uh, equal access to the auditorium. The lacks rules or evidence of valid argument. The only reliable result is that uh, those who participate have expressed themselves in the judgment as a bitter and ineffective refuge. 
directing the source that is saying solar closed system of the semi-capped body and sensible rains at the disposal of contingent events. Bond imaginations do need to include analysis of possible futures like the affirmative, even within the world to challenge settler prescriptions of what is possible or impossible. Resisting contingencies is a starting point for decolonization. Hurley 17, the ongoing a power void, a defined realism distinction possible from impossible with regard to the practice of some colonialism, redefining uh, the a real drawing attention to the possible which becomes uh, becomes uh, possible uh, to the possible wish and the condition becomes a strategy of decolonization, realism and self fulfilling prophecy. Imagine futures to fight their reality have significant material effects in the present making uh, certain things possible. Historical determinism has started native uh, uh, nations, future list indigenous plans are uh, by far the most damaged by ongoing mind practicing, testing, and dumping practices. The cultivated way to find future is in a non linear uh, time frame, but also part of its present. The other possibilities send a couple of possibilities of the past and future to not wholly uh, transfer your timeline. The best way to accomplish this is to imagine that the affirmative happens and debate about it. They need to apply their own to plan, prefer logic, thinking, and acting, and not opportunity cost, fairness, debating abstractions, favors the negative because we uh, set up the I want to see the debater uh, theories application. The alternative is an ineffective response and an effective theorization. Outing settlers' genocidal nature uh, forecloses alignments between anti capital settlement, uh, settlers, and indigenous movements. That gives up on a key base of power that re entrenches colonial interest if foregrounded above all else. No group at all in 14 thousand settlers obviously need to challenge the institution of practice of early colonization. We can't do this if we find the differences and ignore inequalities even in the settlement society. Not only does this prevent a needed alliance, but also again protects all the colonialism. Settler colonialism depends on neoliberal projects of workers who serve a capitalism framing settlers and event rather than structure. It focuses on the question of the who at the expense of how representative settlers system a trans historical subject to historical practices. We need to renaturalize it. We offer this valid colonization to the representation as inevitable historical materialism. It virtually how this condition, but also condition upon white supremacy, hetero patriarchy, capitalism, colonization, the issue of indigenous governance, and there are practices by settlers that are colonial. It is important to recognize relations outside of the binary. The change is not individual transformation, but connected to broader social, economic, and political justice. There are lines of affinity between decolonization and other circles. It's the same. The relationship is essential to a resist revealing a past colonial domination. We control uniqueness for this argument. Resistance to Trump's efforts to exploit the environment are uh, gaining momentum, which disproves the asserted fixity of colonial trains. And more broadly, single payer is effective at, gen at generating coalitions to resist Trumpism uh, because it builds organizing capacity, giving activists experience to challenging and engaging with the state, which reduces the probability, which increases the probability that they can uh, best repeat players in future attempts to contest their exclusion of political forums, which is the day and a brown evidence that also builds organizational habits of coordinated action. Reforming healthcare and reforming other issues requires building broad bases where uh, lots of coalitions align with different people to challenge the structures of power. Otherwise, there is a no, uh, there's not a capacity to attract sufficient resources and material wealth to challenge the entrenched power interest. That's the only way to challenge exclusion, but it's uh, working now. That's, uh, uh, but uh, it's uniquely effective now. That's the uh, noise gap in uh, 16. The, uh, many believe that just people long got to the team of the racism the at present states on the indigenous power. The history of indigenous resistance tell another story. The economic reality is a belief that the pain is intergenerational colonialism. The majority of the same communities are a position to resist on justice and enforce them to retreat. We must hold to a seemingly contrary to realities and devastation, resilience, and minds. It reminds of the same time indigenous people have a dance of rest of victories overly close to false even solely in a settler who replaces false and recognize indigenous rights against the limited still, uh, but they're uh, still against the United States built on civil land. However, this is an observation to imprecise the health of the left of the fourth world and our collective strength. The Army Corps of Engineers simply holds to Dapple's progress at a time when the people in mobilizing Dapple would have been business as usual. Dapple is just one a chapter of much longer story of indigenous resistance the American and Canadian oil industry is much more vulnerable than realized indigenous opposition uh, has made investors uneasy. Standing Rock is the uh, future. That card is marked at uh, Standing Rock is the future. Their psychoanalytic war for this is also Ron Johnson fighting the individual and said, uh, before today's over, determined for a tale to discover the conflict between these drives despite the weakness of the servant of nature is being protected by an internet antagonist and there's a liberty aspect to this drives or dysfunctional subjects able to act otherwise the uh, contradictions rising the conflicts of the little no contract the precise place where freedom has a chance to flash into existence there's breakdown of a drive to clear the space for something and emerging something of the continuation of the default run of things the pain of a conflict that the economy signaling capacity of autonomous humanity is free and so far as enjoyment is uh, never absolute their biopower and biomedicalization of the arguments are wrong our theory is narrowly tailored to contagious illness not Neville's argument about behavioral change uh, reflexive and chronic quarantines are obviously a disproportionate response to the affirmative's call for restricting autonomy and a critical distinction you do not have to live for example the affirmative's ethics could not be applied to force somebody to stop drinking but you definitely cannot kill others that's the widow's evidence but universalizing their want to reject any mandatory enforcement is obviously bad. A failure to treat a villain disease harms other people through contagion. The impact is not equitable because illnesses are merely a nuisance to those who do have access to care and uh, can be lethal to those who don't. Saying it's never okay to restrict behavior of individuals when that behavior is damaging to others is libertarianism. Their court also doesn't justify the universalization of that war. Just as there was one example in which the state overreacted, they dropped the disease they're coming, and their link evidence is about a historical outbreak, which means that that securitization is inevitable, and they have no uh, solution to uh, contest that contestation. The Cook evidence says that our discursive strategy is effective because when it's secured as an advance, it prompts the public to uh, engage in public health response instead of militarized response. The Danish evidence says that the public health advocacy is not crowded out by that secure test response, which is empirically proven in discussions about disease. And more importantly, those responses do not have to be biomedical. The Barron's evidence gives an example of this. It says that uh, it discusses the manifestations of that ethnic and economic communities in uh, Central Africa negotiating their relationships at childbirth in a community setting. Indigenous care does not need to conform to white norms. We're seeing 11. When uh, speaking about primary care, Mr. Goldschmidt, the biomedical model of care and social model, primary care, seeking reference just a uh, distribution of health resource communities to be a goal of organizing, operating, validating health care, enables communities to access the agency for better health outcomes. Continuation of uh, continuum of services must be universally accessible. The point of departure from which resources can decolonize research by expanding how race can uh, gender class and other determinants and intersection shape experiences not western population primary care or recognize research political and uh, as a vehicle of social resistance and activism primary care decolonize research by bridging the gap between knowledge and practice implies the recognition of non-western subjectivity as uh, sources of knowledge. Their daily evidence was also wrong. Settler extinction is referring to the fear that they will no longer be dominant in the land they settle. Not literal extinction, but even if it was,
also contains a present justification so unequal as to scare kills thousands, which is unethical. People should not die because they can't get to a doctor's office. People should commit to taking care of each other to the best of their capacity as a prima facie good, which is an independent reason why the affirmative is good. The permutation solves the rest of their links. They have no indict of a single pair, and net benefits outweigh the residual links. One is the coalition building that benefit requires bridging gaps and it requires enough for foregrounding the alternative as transcendental. That was explained above. Two health disparities, regardless of root cause arguments, proximate manifestations are resolvable by intervention that target financial barriers for access at the point of delivery. For profit ensures can modify care, which interferes with the strategic use of biomedical resources by indigenous people. Caruso at all 15. Research exposed lower disparities in fact, African Americans, Native Americans, even for uh, these groups have lower life expectancies, higher rates of major causes, yet despite the need, need access as worse for a consequence of social inequalities, but financing reinforces and institutionalizes inequality for profit insurance. The goal to provide some incentives to maximize profits and minimize care. Should we in the U.S. free care as a commodity would eliminate the motive to uh, deny a needed care? Uh, I'll read Leopold. Uh, so that's this card's a net benefit to coalition building. Um, no, you don't think so? Mm. What do you think I should? Well, read the card. This is Dally's. Just like falsely extrapolates the young 17. Trump. Oh, yeah, I didn't read that. Dally's wrong, young 17. Uh, repetitive revisitation of uh, frontier tropes here calls what uh, Daly calls the present half reality settled colonial narrative. Of course, a cycle is what one of the histories and one of the many structures of violence that shape, uh, that shape life in the Western U.S. It's not to say that Western cultural production is always a result of settled colonial ideology. Imagining post Western future crisis could collaborate out with more than just inclusive and its politics. A movement must be a decolonial, a uh, decrypting structures without a work to reify these as permanent or inevitable, but to further contradictions. That was under the like theory bad header. It's like at the bottom. What card is that? Uh, Young and Veracini, 17. I the tag is like, it particularly doesn't imply it's a little funny long I don't think I have that card. It's, it's, it's um, right after the Johnston 5 card about the little digital economy. Oh, word, word. Okay, cool. Thanks. Gotcha. You good? Huh? What is the policy research? Uh, the about the... Read what? You read a card about... Oh, the like Racine card? Yeah. Uh, so that card is referring to your arguments about how Western biomedical practices are the ones that are used to control diseases in indigenous care settings. Okay, uh, this... Uh, so, like, that, that card just says that does not intrinsically need to be the case. Primary care research can be... This very criticism of Daly is about a different article. It's about when Daly... Or Daly writes about Deleuze. Why is this applicable? It's not a criticism of a different article. Yeah, it's about frontier tropes in context of the rhizomatic West. The, Did you read the citation? Yes, I used the Google Scholar thing that was like cited <laughs> by. That's the first wave of research that you do when you try to answer an article. Oh, okay. uh, I got it's it. like, it, it is referring to that. Did thing. you read the rest of the card? Can I get a, you said policy, policy is contingent. Can I get an example of what policies you think have helped native people? Can I give an example? Yeah. Well, we had a great Caruso card that is like a single pair of wood so because it eliminates a pair of this imagined future. Can single I get a point that's that? happened though? Yeah. A point that's happened? Well, so uh, the Army Corps of Engineers uh, canceled a bunch of projects to mine on native lands okay. as a result of protests. That's Stop mining. Noise cat. What? Sorry. Stop mining. Uh, uh, like noise obviously noise not completely, but noise like. Noise cat says that broadly. Indigenous movements. I want an example. Can I get it broadly? It says this is the exact shit the, 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 the card. The card. I, no, I don't know more. The card no, says that oil and gas investors have those movements. Those movements. Those movements accomplished contingent successes. Oil and gas, oil and gas mining, single payer. You got any more? Uh, I don't think I've read cards that name other specific examples. We've read cards indicting your logic. And we don't need that many. Do you have any that you just think about, like not in your cards? Like, Look, we only need to win with the affirmative okay, so is a good idea. Pretty, uh, so all of this line of questioning yeah, is completely You make irrelevant. this argument that it's only if it kills other people. How do you determine if a disease or a condition kills other people? Uh, well, that's a pretty complicated question, and that's kind of getting at my point about how the question of relationality differs depending on what community it's in. So, for example, in this Akan community that I referenced that Barron's talks about, the question of childbirth was deemed to be relational, even though it's not like a contagious illness, because the way that their child rearing model worked was that the community was in charge of it, so there were inter individual effects. I but, guess in that context, like, is it just if a condition hurts someone else? Like, it hurts more than just you? Uh, if it hurts more than just you, then you should care about the effects that it has on other people, just like to be a I have a quick question. Have to Wait, I have a quick question. Okay. If I murder a white person, is that bad? Uh, if you murder a white person is bad, we think murdering people is bad. No, I asked a specific question. If I murder a white person, is it bad? It, we're not going to say that killing it for any purpose whatsoever is transcendentally bad, but we will say that Killing somebody for no reason would be bad. Like if you killed but, someone in the process uh, of a liberating struggle or whatever, then like there is question? a utilitarian calculation that is being made there. Do you mind if I take prep to ask one more question? 
Sure. The attack of the Snail Grove card was outing settler genocidal nature is bad. What does it mean to out settler genocidal nature? Th that was a pretty imprecise phrasing. The, it was referring to the line in the Henderson card. But you chose to say it, so I would ask, why did you say it, and what does it mean? Uh, I was referring to this part of the Snow Grove evidence that was saying that we need to, like, foreground the fact that settlers are fundamentally genocidal. Snow Grove we shouldn't like, foreground that. Huh? We shouldn't foreground that. Not to the expense of everything else. What do you mean? Again, you outing is an imprecise phrase, and I don't think it reflects what I was trying to get at. Fair Foregr we should not foreground an ontological status of settlerism above all everything else. I hey, think can that's we get a, the framework interpreter. Uh, like, we get our app, and you have to read links to it. What is no? I want the line by line that you read. Just like he said, we get to weigh the app, and links have to be based on the plain text. Plain text. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you take? Uh, I'm going to spell this card yeah, yeah. in. Is it you? Oh. Ah. Okay. Uh, can I, I'm going to speak from up here because my computer has to be plugged in. So it's up live stream. <laughs> Cool. Is everybody here now? Yeah. Um, I'm going to do this ontology stuff at the top. Um, yeah, then it's going to be straight to NC order, or to AC order. Uh, I'm going to sign part, sign post the parts that Jacob's going to take on the line by line, but it should be pretty neat straight down. I'm serious, except for this ontology stuff at the top, it will be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, look, Sean. I'm serious. <laughs> Okay. We're good. If I win the ontology debate, I win the round ontology determines the structure of society, meaning itself, being questions or a form, ethics, advocacy, solvency, and value itself, on ontological determination, the reverence operates at large with epistemological level, but ontology over determines epistemology, be the structure to market the limit of possible action, and interpret how one uses epistemological experiences. Thus, winning the rentness of ontology before closes a few damning incubations. First, the affirmative project is so far as the settlement metaphysics reified, the just which clears any of flesh. Secondly, the affirmative project would inevitably fail because not all structure determine the political limit of economy and market the limit of possible action. Third, it turns any pedagogical value, the affirmative because it means the pedagogical objective required is about finding balance, genocide, and being here in a fourth, it turns any impact on cellular understand value and ethical capital charge on knowledge grouping on red genocide. The genocide red flush clears the way for intercellular discussion of the value. I thought that reading the will of the the one and two would give them time to answer in the two AC, but they have straight conceded that all ethics are determined by genocide in the form of the commons, which allows us to debate about who has subjectivity, what is a relation, and what is ethics. I mean, this is a meta ethical structuring principle, means that every ethics claim they've made is a reason you vote negative or right about ontology, conquest, of frontier violence, removal to reservation, avoiding schools of systemic violence, and police brutality. The process of genocide has never ended. Ontology has to be true, otherwise, you can't its Realities of why natives are the most killed by police and citizens, why illegal for non natives to rape natives on reservations, or nor can you explain a little bit of realities like the fact that genocide dominated people created community by having outings to hunt natives, or why settlers adore themselves with native industry. This can't be explained except by the fact that this is ontological. They said a few examples that contest this, but I'll answer them here. The first is the South there noise can evidence solution just says this soft privatized fisheries, but they have conceded that industrialism itself is a settler colonial mechanism. The young evidence, as well as our 
Uh, oh, yeah, as well as the Maxwell and Noble and Evans constitute the type of move to industrialism which creates climate change as well. They may have solved the, stop the privatization of fishing, but they have not stopped the ocean acidification which kills the fish. This is a overturn also the type of more mining oil and gas drugs. Also, Dapple failed. Any other example I think they give is going to be new in this based on blog strategy. Furthermore, you should read in the appearance of the betterment through the idea that the Southern Colonial Foundation above political sovereignty is a way to expansion. This imperial security state that finds new enemies abroad, new obstacles, deals, expansion. This renders any institutional for bank up to reinvest in institutional equity violence. It means a small degree of violence are actually in line with the maintenance of genocide because it functions as a release valve for several societies to access. This flips the burden because it means they have to explain why does settlerism keep occurring even after reforms are passed? Why does the system always return back to genocide? Now the first argument at the top is that disease is causing extinction. They have conceived of the border strap is that you should prioritize the ethical meta ethical principle of genocide priority extinction. Secondly is that this is their thing about agency. Also they, they have conceived that if people do not have agency that is the Wilson argument. It means that on the internal door ethical framing the next argument is the pompous evidence. This is a shitty card. It literally just says that we're two sweeping generalizations but one if I when Lincoln means we're not generic, and two, this assumes I just said fuck the West without any warrants for that evidence. I think I'll make that more on the, uh, on the thing above. They say utilitarianism, good. This is the, you have conceded the Wilderson, which means that ethics flows our way. Do not allow new one-year explanation of this happening into the Wilderson or Wilderson once in the entirety of the 2AC block strategy has been on 2AC co concessions. Now, the next argument here is that the alternative can't solve that is the Zach 16 evidence, but this is not an indictment of the alternative. It just says that social discourse, social justice discourse doesn't translate into policy. This is not the same as the type of refusal to invest in the affirmative that is the uh, alternative. The next argument here that possible futures are good. You have literally zero warrants in this card. It literally just says that maybe futures would be good, with no explanation of why that is true. Furthermore, this has an impact turned by the well, by the as well the young evidence as well as the will to the case that the product of futurity is always one that is caused to the white child that it requires the negation of the Indian child as well as the death of the native mother as the condition of possibility reifies genocide. That argument here is the framework stuff. So I'll do it here. Meta framework. If I win ontology, I win framework because fairness and education are just tools to make us better members of the southern nation state. Furthermore, the process of evaluation is inherently settler colonial. They have conceded that value itself is violent. And that's of the world evidence that they can see from the one to see. So you should refuse to evaluate them all together, which is an argument I don't think they have any game on the Nexus framework. It's in the court, there's the Young and Henderson evidence. The only question is whether we're not able to invest in the world of framework. A couple reasons. First, the most world, world, the only impact to make is our psychic investment. The affirmative research models, ethical like framework, political ideology. The only thing that form to make after the round two is the prerogatives. The affirmative pedagogical, social, political, objective, depending on the conceptual fantasy, the approach to identify, evaluate, and enjoy the affirmative will have no meaning without consensus. We can't just evaluate a fantasy in a vacuum, but must ask why we desire those fantasies. This means resolving this is a sequencing question. And this solves their impacts. Once fairness is equally accessible, both teams, all the affirmative defendants have specific ethical and logical frameworks. They use to make their claims in the first place. Most fairness is just an internal link to education. Every link we win is a reason their education is bad. And two is clash. They're able to compete and test the negative theories uh, against their theories in this round. For example, they could have read the type of the ethics of relationality they propose, as well as you tell us all negative ground against the pessimism or affirmative ground against the pessimism of the negative. And three is education. Basically, my physical health care is critically important because it allows the grapple with the union ways, political theory, and shot power shapes response to health care. Now, is impact framing all the reasons of operation, evaluating impacts. What you can resolve in the round. This means you only weigh libido impacts because they only think the ballot can resolve. Thus, the role of the judge, libido investor, investor. Also, if we even if we lose the driver, I mean, they have conceded that libido energy exists, which means this is still preferable. And for multiple reasons, this is preferable. One is sociology, ballot shape, productivity, winter 15. Oh, damn, I didn't send this out. You know what? I'm not gonna go for this. I'll just let Jacob read this stuff real quick. Hey, I'm gonna have two cards for you to okay, read real quick. Go. Yeah, sociology, balance shapes, activity, second is genocide makes us say any other framing and evolution used to be in a fairly direction of firm below bottom physical mass and made to search that we are never ethically valuable. Now the next argument here is the type of all as the snowbro evidence that's gonna be the one and all. The next argument here is the noise cat evidence. I've already done this work above. That is the ontology debate. Furthermore, you should look at these small blippy things that have not actually resolved violence to actually be the way in which genocide maintains itself through the mystification of settler violence. Next argument is that movements are good. You have impact every link that we win is reason why the movements that you create is bad. That means that if I win a link to the app, I win this, the drives evidence is going to be in the one and see the next argument here is that they're not forced to live, but this is literally said that you can drink yourself to death, but what about the fact when you drink to death, you are more likely for diseases to spread to other people, the line that they're trying to put off here does not exist, people who are alcoholics or take drugs are more likely to pass on infections, does that mean that we criminalize them there as a compulsory will to live, also uh, the next argument here is that they don't have to be biomedical, this card is trash, it literally says that we can decolonize research, whatever the fuck that means, and also to re and also it means that every link that we win is a reason they don't do this, it's still biomedical, Medical and links to it does not decolonize the daily indi. That's going to be the one and all. The permutation I'm going to do the links here first is uh, first is link framing for the links of the Young and Henderson evidence. Three implications: first debate is ultimately an activity has to evaluate value possible worlds and absence problem. Another part of the is and participate in a fantastic project. The affirmative increases will be no investment in genocide. This means it's not not unique because there's specific investments a unique increase as well as the ballot. B is being affirmed. The affirmative said now what they meant. There are different number of ways to communicate meaning, but the unconscious reveals itself in the ways we said to enunciate our same. This means you don't allow them any sort of way. We may change the meaning arguments. 
and C is signifying change every word and since change the mean to both the words before every sentence change the mean to every sentence in the paragraph before every paragraph change the mean to every paragraph in the article before a whole deal book or it's called the tech now I'm gonna go for first for four links versus disease we've got two different initial links to the affirmative theorization of disease the first is that the affirmative theorize disease now the western theories of health care which are not indigenous modes of health this not this does produce health but rather cultural and literal genocide does not only our indigenous bodies but most methods of health destroyed by cultural destruction skyrockets anxiety depression feeding the suicide epidemic for native people that never make the claim they don't force people to use western medicine but when the only medicine they have access to is western health centers the plan imagines it is the, just a mystification of all political power the second however is the scientific rationality and objectivity uh, our language they have conceded which turns into uh, turns a pen off the gaze of surveillance one indigenous bodies not only produce an inevitable future moment in which indigenous people, native people will refuse to uh, fall into their modes of health governance meaning they won't solve for disease anyway but it also criminalizes those people who are responsible for disease that's matt's well and noble on bs futurity the wills of history become the first native slave they invest in futurity it's been as a quote only the future come but ever the present time is not used rather slaves the native is passing the affirmative means we'll invest in temporality here are some quotes quote human civilization may be approaching such a critical threshold quote from barium quote the basic ethical aspect of infinite impact is this a very small group of life today can make decisions that fundamentally like all future generations quote from pamela marshall this proves the ways in which not only does it define futurity in relation to civilization knowable only in contradistinction to the state of nature which becomes all corporealized the body of the native but how it lies the fundamental instability at the heart of being and defer any confrontation with lag this results in scapegoat in order to explain the instability shown how their evidence makes appeal to future generations which is just code for the white child this is particularly true since their pamela marshall evidence in size four fontless civilization collapses in effect of climate change but literally only discusses civilization in the context of Western societies. That's sort of the continuation of savage denials and means an investment mechanism of genocide. That is, that is young. Now the B is C is fantasy is extinct. They from this exist is haunted by the native discourse of exchange on mutual rather create a network of racial affiliations among cells with all the known kind of vulnerability claims of the native, but also to build racial movements to reify race and patriarchal structure power plus in the discourse of the end of civilization human beings is always white civilization and white humanity. Some quotes quote humanization may approach such a threshold for barium quote in the worst case this is we risk extinction of our own species quote from Pamela Armstrong this proves the affirmative vision itself as a defender of the coming of end of civilization. This is particularly alive with the cellular imaginaries can place the collapse of Western civilization with the death of the species in Pamela Armstrong. That was this requires constant violence against all Western others to come to be barbarians at the gate of diseased bodies who must be incarcerated and exterminated. These have to invest in all work to energize racist and patriarchal movements, which they turn to the movements argument. But all structural issues humanity is when only that is daily. I'm going to do the cop carnico evidence empirically single pair of genocide. Good minute, also T. Significant comparisons with the access to prisons, regardless of income to health, this is true despite the universal access to health care is not even more population average on people's community and the disparities. Urban population experience greater disparities than those in the Roman Reserve style. Chronic inequalities, human understanding, and manifestation of multiple interests are one unlocked mechanisms of poverty and inclusion. These mechanisms are closely controlled and made by all the colonial possession of inherently racist nature. Access to health care is not only defined by physical access, but immediate with a wider social and historical context and medical practice. Major health services, well, unless they're medicine and visual public health approaches tend not to address the social and economic terms that greatly affect individual health and reality services to accommodate cultural differences. I'm gonna take some prep before this hits. Hey, I didn't get to this young and Barachini. Uh, 17 evidence. Which one's that? That's the indict of Daly that says that no, just. I was taking that right. Oh, dope. Uh, can you read the Wilderson and Sociogeny stuff if you have time? Yeah. Cool. Stop. 804. Uh, 14 seconds. I did 810. So I have 756. It's not easy. So. You know what? Steven, if you really feel like that eight seconds is what's gonna make the difference in this debate, I will put the 756. Okay, cool. Whatever. Um, Not really a negotiation. We're good. <laughs> um, okay, so this Wilderson evidence that you asserted we dropped, you applied it a bunch of places. A place that I found particularly interesting was the spot where you said that because ethics, we, uh, we said ethics flows our way, therefore everything that is ethical should actually flow in your direction. Yes. Like, what do you think? What do you think ethics means? Cool. So I think ethics determines whether or not actions are right or wrong and instills value upon particular actions and behaviors. Uh -huh. And your argument is we should do everything that's wrong. So that's the implication that, of there. So no, I didn't say like be anti-ethical. My argument is that the conditions of value and the way that we understand what it means to be a subject and to mm -hmm. have value is dependent upon genocide. All of your ethics questions that are like- What's value? Things. That was another one that you kind of dropped in a bunch of places that you said we should be the opposite of, so what's that? Yeah, cool. So I guess in a couple ways, right? I actually think value is racist for a few reasons. One, I think it's in line with the way that capitalism kind of assigns value to particular bodies that are productive. Why does value have to be financial? It, doesn't and the fact that you think capitalism is just financial is particularly disturbing. I, I don't, but, but so great. Right. Okay, so value right is in line with the way that we produce things for settler society and those fall from particular matrices of what it has importance, what matters, what enters the libido economy of desire. Our argument is that the way that that libido economy of desire and what is desirable is shaped happens through genocide. 
right, which provides the groundwork for intra-settler discussions about what is ethical, what is So value. the reason, hold on, so the reason that value intrinsically causes genocide is because value is tied to productivity and there is a libidinal drive to produce and productivity is genocidal. So I feel like that's a little bit messier in the way that I would say I would say that value is inherently genocidal because it requires genocide in order for the discussions about what is valuable to take place. It requires genocide, but your argument is the so decolonial for, for movement. For settlers so like, to come how together, would you characterize like, in the context of in the language of this like value thing? How would you characterize your you know how would you characterize a decolonial epistemological or ontological effort? Right. So our app we say so meta ethical. We think we should align ourselves with the meta-ethically structuring principle of genocide, which does not appeal to value or ethicality, okay. but rather says that this is a pri prior ontological determinant of how we should understand uh -huh. all being. You said that all industrialization is settler colonial. Yeah. Uh, if an indigenous individual owned an industrial producing, you know, industry, like how, no, how would that work within not, your analytic? Okay. Yeah. Here's why. People who are colonized desire shit that is fucked up for them because settlers tell them their whole lives that that is a thing that you want and is what will secure your life. The only reason why an indigenous person would ever try to produce something is because settlers told them to. I think if your question is why do I think that indigenous people own factories, it's because society values the generation of extraction of wealth from nature and the transformation of that into so a commodity. Indigenous individuals have no agency life. in this description of why indigenous people own factories. I don't know what the fuck agency means in this description. I, yeah, I think they have a choice but I think that the way that it's overwhelmingly determined by systemic categories of power. Uh, it should be sound. There's four cards, it's a bold, uh, bold decision. But I wonder if the world's is pretty short. Hmm? Your phone's vibrating? Oh, it's just a time. Oh. Okay. Which no one cares about anyway. I'll move a little closer. Yeah. straight down. There's going to be all stuff at the top, and I'll respond to a few things they said. And then I'll make some more. Well, I would hope so. <laughs> Thanks, <Major. laughs> Right? Hey, he told you where to start with the alt stuff. So I have alt and then arguments. Yes. <laughs> alt and straight down. And somewhere in that point, I will answer the Snellgrove card, I'll answer the Young and Veracini card, and then answer the Johnston card. It's getting really ambitious now. <laughs> right. Truthfully. LOL, this man was like, I don't even need the flow. Okay. Wow. I can barely read this thing anyway. I just do it so it looks like I'm making notes of some kind. <laughs> to be honest, I've never agreed with this statement Alternative framing. This is not a plan versus counter plan. The alternative is a question which type of libidinal investments we should make. The alternative is no alternative. Radical revelation about the way which a firm is making a libidinal and cautious investment settle with the native is foreclosed or fails to be present, either meaning the match or symbolic or not meaning the rule, which is say the native does not exist or a claim that says final foreclosure by the ontological grounding for me and value. This curves both the level of clearing bodies for foam, family, and issue, but also level the psyche is prominent theories of nationhood defined itself on the proven capacity for conquest or being able to discover this violence and forms the psyche at the individual levels. Individuals come to identify beauty, me and value through the seller or mago. This is seen how white people think value through productivity or seller metaphysics. It because an unconscious level of the image of humanity is a seller image we've all constantly identified with unconsciously. Now, our Corey and Scott Myers hint and indicates that there was no hope for the end of genocide. However, in these space we have a small choice about whether to invest more or less in genocide. We all know the inference plan what happened, but that doesn't make it any less a fantasy. A fantasy where things get better, where we suffer less, where everything is better. Where sports say no, refuse to invest in the image which does not only solve but increases our participation in violence. So negative enough for an alternative plan, but for a hope of a better future to dwell in the cracks of the seller's psyche, confront native genocide, not as something meaningful. Or rather, something annihilates meaning, which is not such activity calls for us to all dwell in the violence and no hope for you, no future reconciliation. This means situating our understandings and politics in the light of that drive, i.e., the way in which they don't spill up in the way in which repetition, compulsion, A, invest in the status quo to contingently created, i.e., the four words of argument will be going above. This means the alternative functions a liberal form of libido refusal or libido of essence and genocide. There's a few distinctions, and I think you should frame how you understand the majority of the affirmative argument. First, is they're inevitably going to go for an argument about risk calculus. You should be suspect by the way in which affirmative tries to grant y'all empathetic by avoiding risk 
dangly, 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 black and native flesh and suede drone at the gallery. Let's be real here. You aren't going to any of these clinics or craning any of the operates to politics and inclusivity that mystifies the way in which power not only articulates through the exclusion of native folks from health insurance, but also inclusion and diversity, which are parasitic upon absorbing native suffering as a bargaining tool and platform for their own political agenda and liberal telos, which double turns all their arguments about the necessity of practice. The very grammar of their speech requires a the constant sacrifice of native life so their political analysis can become coherent. Even more so, this contingent discourse never meets women which uh, savagery constitutes the way in which pathology is cohered, i.e. the way in which uh, things like alcoholism become weaponized, i.e. Yeah, native people are to blame for being alcoholics because it hurts their family, it hurts other people. This causes interventions in the native families, i.e. the breaking of argument, the way in which the BIA justified this to test on native American children, constantly occupies with the way in which the fantasy becomes weaponized, which means even if you win your way, your app, you don't get to weigh the perfect implementation, but the mechanism by which it becomes overdetermined, which is the argument, which means you should prefer uh, analysis of quotidianness as a few implications versus sociology, valid, safe subjectivity. It's an interim process that's in maybe neurochemically induces behavior, which are in 15, the truth analysis is always specified by storytelling, characteristics, socially replicated, code of swarm, certainly elaborate overall epistemological order. This ensures that each truth and truth will likely function semantically in neurochemically induce a performance act of role like an individual's collective behavior. Second is genocide destroys any notion of a value calculus because it's used to be unfairly in the direction of the affirmative this logical biophysical mass and is such that makes it that they can never be valuable. Cool means you should invert the scales. Well, we're saying only one per six of Americans or indigenous impact so trapped profoundly the savage equals one per six of the population center equals 80.6 since context genocide reverses the savage acceleration with perfect symmetry here lies the mannequin of the savage act was in the Permutation. This answers the permutation of multiple reasons. First, the permutation is separate and intrinsic, separate and links to the affirmative odds, the analytics of the affirmative order, making project ethical. This also proves you to be suspect of the jargon words. We got check the alternatives, no all, which means any explanation of a permutation of the way or solves first layer. Second is links or gets all proves the way in which they conceptualize and investment or reinvestment in genocide, which means we're relevant. Also proves the larger theoretical argument. The last dis that I'm going for is you should be suspect of the way in which they posture intervention into people's autonomy, see privacy for the good of community. Two reasons. First is it internally turns the majority of their understandings of coalition which are based on a notion of interest convergence in which indigenous and black domains must make their domains palatable to all the white interests because the working class won't give a shit unless it's in their interest. This creates the worst forms of coalition because then white people have an incentive to snitch on indigenous and black uh, res radical resistance once they've gotten what they want proven A, by the way in which DAPO becomes re and not as an issue of capital, not colonialism. There's multiple examples so from Dan Brown. It says we need to increase socialist organizing capacity and build working class power for the long term structure and political education fosters this shared self-interest. This is also proven it creates a capacity for a victim blaming. Mean, you can see this in Tulsa where they built white people built a fancy new hospital for black people and black people didn't go because they didn't trust the institution. White people a backlash against black people because it was then, then their fault for structurally in due to induced illness. The second impact is it justifies the creation of biobanks which is explicitly supported by their own will of widow's evidence which says that DNA becomes a repository of information that if genetic information contains an awful lot of uh, DNA it then says that we should create biobanks that so people can use it to understand sexual partners may desire the information when making reproductive decisions, which A is ableist because it's the same logic that says we can abort people that are going to have Down syndrome, or it's also transphobic the way in which weapons, which proves historical examples on that. I we articulated the snail grove evidence cross sex on this was fucking laughable. They said Albing settlers at the Cali is violent because it destroys coalition. Let's translate this into normal language. This argument is saying if you call people racist, white people will feel bad and not join the coalition, which means A, you should be suspect of their arguments because it's the creation of white empathy, especially you, Stephen and Samuel the way in which that co-constitutes your able to sway your own ethical which proves all our voyeurism arguments but their argument is not what you mean no this is exactly the way in which you codified it which proves the argument this evidence just indicates that there are other factors and it would be sad if it was ontological but doesn't give historical examples you should frame it through the two and see the young and very cheap evidence this evidence is applying daily to say that frontier narratives are bad i.e. to lose which is not applicable to its arguments which means you have not read that article John's evidence this evidence is a negative card it says the way in which the drive overcomes our base level desires such as hunger and other shit, i.e. Johnson's asking why we act against our own interests. This is a distinction between a desire and a drive. Genocide is based on a drive, a unconscious sabotage, which is the way in which the entrance into the symbolic both alienates yourself, i.e. you cannot fulfill your desires. The way in which that consensually uh, codes how we understand the example of this is the capacity for me to name what I get is never really what I get, right? So there's always kind of a disjunction there. Don't give me that little Sean. I'm proud of him. <laughs> I'm
I'm kind of interested that you labeled our last debate as a settler colonial theory K. It's kind of interesting. Okay. It's not like a link argument or anything. I'm just interested. Uh, it's interesting to me too. I don't. I didn't do it. But. For, who puts up your uh, little? What do you think? Anthony. Anthony? Yeah. <laughs> it is interesting. Gonna be real wild, and when I start my prep, you're not gonna let me pick a song before I start prep. Yeah, you're gonna play music during your prep time. No, I'm asking, will you let me find a song and then start prep? Are you gonna be wild and be like, no? I'm gonna start the timer. So when so this you, speech is over. So work. So I'm gonna find my song now. That's yeah, what sure, I was feel free. Cue <laughs> it up, man. I don't know if you got anything important to do right now. I was just checking. You know. I mean, it's just because you'd like change your mind before the two hour starts. You know that I mean? is a problem. You are correct. Can I intervene in this? Can I get not God's plan? I was going to play Broken Clocks by SZA. We can do that. <laughs> I just pulled it up just now. <laughs> <laughs> the last debate was called the God's plan real hard. <laughs> I can't do this right now. <laughs> Me? Yes, you. That's fair. It had just come out. <laughs> don't tell me you don't think that song is kind of a bop. What song? Do you know? God's plan. I keep it. Look alive. Huh? Different. Look alive. Either way, you think you know, Look Alive is better than God's plan? Yeah. We have a conversation. Yes, we can. Okay. Anyway, James, you're done. <laughs> um, I'll say what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's going to start with like an overview talking about util, and then, you know. Okay. An overview of what? The case. Oh, well, I'm just going to be talking like, about what? Yeah, I thought he right. maybe said overview on util, though. But, yeah. You it said it's not going to be super long? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> single here solves disease and then it causes extinction. Evaluate impacts the reutil frame with the impact of existential debts is infinite and cannot be compared to other harms against extinction foreclosed the possibility of any possible reductive action in the future. Arguments to the contrary reflects hubris and psychological denial. There's no real answer. The fact that other things are bad does not mean they outweigh extinction. The reason anti indigenous racism is so pernicious is that it causes preventable death and suffering and global disease would exponentially spike such death and suffering. That's all of Hamlet and Armstrong. We do not like to the footnoting arguments. Util should only be invoked at the highest end of risk level. Other preventable injustices can and should be corrected. That's the Kirkwood evidence. The voyeurism argument is the first one of an answer. It's not based on evidence. 
at all. We're not using indigenous suffering or disease as a platform. We think it's good to advocate for the resolution of preventable suffering in public spaces. They cause ethical localism because settlers like Anthony and myself would never care about settler colonial violence or violence that occurs to people that is not us, which is a terrible model, and people should care about the violence that is inflicted upon others. The, uh, at the top of the K, the alternative has no capacity to meaningfully alter structures of power. Power is not distributed evenly, but is used by institutions and opportunistic individuals who shape society to benefit their interests. But criticizing a system lacks causal power because it does not disrupt those institutions which are materially instantiated and supported. It's uh, especially true for settler colonialism. The structures that drive indigenous death depend on material politics and infrastructures that can be broken down. That's the Zach and Webster evidence, and then the Weber evidence. They say the alternative is no alternative. They are shockingly correct. Nothing about refusing or confronting or being haunted by changes. Any of the structures they critique, the ontology stuff. Ontology does not mean we win the debate. Our impact framing stuff comes first. If we win, solve extinction. It's independently good. That was the overview. It does not make the app fail. We still solve disease, which is, which is our impact. There's no insurance uh, case argument that is actually warranted. It doesn't turn on pedagogy. Teaching people that single payers independently good because it instantiates movements, instantiates movements to disrupt a system that kills thousands uh, who don't have care. They, they say we consider the Willerson card. What is the opposite of ethics? Willerson is a the Willerson is a film professor, not qualified to indict all of ethics. The card is pretty bad and is not up to the normal standards. It's uh, still unethical to let people die if they want to live. Their thing depends on a tautology of vague terms like ethics and value. Cross six proof that that was meaningless. They say they answer our examples, but all they did was state the example and repeat that their thesis was ontological. Adding people thing is silly. We're not saying we don't call it. We're not saying don't call people on racism. We're saying don't ontologize uh, settlerism and throw meaningful help. Their ontology arguments are wrong. What is the snow grove, evi snow grove evidence? Settlers obviously need to do their own work and challenge their own institutions and practices that serve to protect our further colonization. Their theorization precludes this by flattening differences and ignoring the inequalities and power relationships that exist within settler society. A homeless white person, a rich descendant of slaves, and a native CEO of an oil company have different relationships to violence. Collapsing them to their categories serves just to reify them. Colonialism is not just a research project or an epistemic project. It is material and many powerful people have a stake in its existence, which gives the system an inertia that is resilient to their good intentions. Only movements that change the power structure can solve. Second is the noise cat evidence, who is indigenous, which answers their beef with, with Snow group about them being a settler. Ontology arguments are false universality. They're premised on racist myths of native incapacity, which underestimates indigenous resistance. There's plenty of historical examples of settlers and natives working together to stop preventable injustice, including working with progressives to end mining on native lands, attacking oil and gas companies in the campaign to stop dabble, which is a successful and temporarily halting the pipeline. Their focus on examples is obviously silly in an ontology debate, because ontology cannot be proven or disproven by anecdotes, but depend on them winning a theory of violence. We are disproving that theory of violence, and past examples don't prove that it will infinitely continue into the future, because that relies on a model of epistemic forecasting that is not mm, intrinsic to human subjectivity. Third is the Pappas evidence. There is no superstructure of settler colonialism, only a constellation of millions of actions that can be undone through social and political transformation. Anything else is academic abstraction, which is bad, because case studies must explicitly engage, uh, must engage specificity to have explanatory power. Now, dropped under the framework arguments, links have to disprove the plan, and we get to weigh the app's impacts. One is clash. Debates about assumptions and methodology are infinitely aggressive, and the app cannot be prepared to defend every possible component of the one you see clash always because it's key to operationalize all the values of debate. Second is logic, thinking and acting are not opportunity cost logic is key to make any good decisions. This does not mean that they don't get critique arguments. It means that they don't get to critique arguments that indict broad systems that the world works in, but have to disprove the idea that passing a single player is good. Ontology does not determine our impacts of it as a game and clash is independent of their ontology stuff. Value is not violent. This was silly and proven in cross versus the argument I made of research argument models argument is too sweeping. They make everything in the one you see contestable, which crushes ground because we can't defend every research model that we could have potentially used. The, the next argument about desire and fantasy shit begs the question of psychoanalysis, which I'm going to do a little bit below. The fairness and clash are intrinsic goods, which answers their, which answers their argument about ontology and the metaphysics of, the metaphysics of healthcare. Good argument. You can still talk about the metaphysics of healthcare by reading links to the plan. They say only way to live in investments and the role of the judge argument that is obviously arbitrary. The role of the ballot role of the judge is to vote for the team that wins the debate. Psychoanalysis is bankrupt. One, their daily evidence falsely extrapolates it just because a settler colonialism is a structure that influences violence does not make it trans historical or totalizing. That's young and very which explicitly indicts their author. Go on Google Scholar. Our person is directly citing theirs. Yes, it says to lose in the card, but that does not mean it doesn't apply. Second, the living no economy is wrong. Ace of point, conflicting drive. Psychology proves single behavioral traits don't dictate action because humans are complex and cannot be compelled by any single imperative. That's the Johnson evidence. Second is that it's reductionist. Pathology does not drive action. Socialization does. That's Evans 15. This requires more willingness to interrogate violence and historical counter than it does spending a new liberal discourse of hate and normalization. You often to often suffer and present as a matter of uh, pleasure and taste rather than a broader social political discourse. This uh, leads to question of individual pathology over any sense of a condition of the government. Rise to live in all investments. They have no empirical or sociological backing for all of their psychoanalysis arguments. So when they justify their ontology arguments by saying it is based on uh, something, a desire, lack, fantasy, whatever, none of those things are empirically proven. The permutation it resolves their arguments. The perm would combine single payer with a recognition of haunting and the irreparability of indigenous violence. Single payer is good for indigenous people, which is 
is a net benefit of the permutation. One is the cruise of evidence that says that status quo private insurance commodifies people and causes frightening health disparities for natives. The plans can solve it. Second is that it, it can be non coercive. The receipt evidence says that caregivers have moved away from the biomedical model. Their links are arguments are anecdotal. The biobanking argument does not apply. Our ethic does not justify because people's DNA does not need to be collected for uh, contagious disease prevention. Biobanks exist now via the FBI. They don't have a mechanism to break that, that, break that down perm to the plan. And the alternative without biobanks, their disease link argument is the most abstract thing in the world. Make them explain how we specifically destroy people's culture. The Rossini evidence answers this. The futurity link argument depends on them winning the ontology stuff, which I did above. The fantasies link argument is wrong. The Dali evidence says that they, are, says that, uh, they don't prove anything. Uh, that was the argument I explained in the Dali evidence. The severance and transitiveness argument begs the question of whether or not they want to link to make the autonomy link argument does not apply. Interest convergence actually makes people interdependent, which means that white people would have an incentive to not defect or not snitch on their indigenous and black counterparts, which means that movements can be effective. There is a net benefit of uh, solving extinction, even if you're a little bit unsure of their ontology arguments. Take my hair out for the people. Oh, that's <laughs> also, uh, anyone on the stream, look at the ad. Email either jacob.k.smith at ou.edu or niwaras7 if you need coaches, lab leaders, anything. Why don't you braid it then? Well, I was, it's for the people, Rachel. I'm the people's champion. Ew. Actually, I, I think Iowa is the people's now, champion. Iowa is the people's <laughs> champion. Before Iowa we won, it was the, Darius, because he would concede rounds to people he felt deserved to win. No, we, we are the people's octafinalist. <laughs> That's fair. I'll take that. <laughs> uh, cool. So if you're trying to line up arguments, uh, I'm going to do the meta-ethic stuff first. You say it's too late? Fair enough. But that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to do the meta-ethic stuff. Look, I'm sorry, Kentucky is shitty at reading authors that black and native bears have been reading for years, but there's no answer to Wilderson evidence that the 2AC and generic extensions of this is what ethics should be is not an answer to ethics is fundamentally unethical. These are two different arguments. Ad hominem arguments of the 1AR are not sufficient to answer this argument. I'll do the work here. Value and ethics comes from a collective consensus on what it means to be for something to be desirable, what it means to be alive, and what it means to do something good. Genocide is the prerequisite of these things. Ace of point is that the clearing of native people had to happen before the collective commons can be struggled upon and shared. There are examples about oil and gas. I'll prove this because debating what is ethical about what resource dominion and use first requires native people that have been cleared in order for debates about what to do with the land they occupy to be used for and peace the point is that what it means what is that what it meant to get shared in the commons what it meant to be desirable what it meant to be a good person was the bit of on genocide and nativeness as the point of contradistinction this has shown how civilization is lauded even though there's contradistinction to primitive times before which was the later with native people or how western primitive stands to be taken for wide noses dark hair and dark skin to get ugly this means that they have zero ground to win these arguments this is a meta ontological framework that even every argument they win is a rather good as reason to Vote negative. Also, it forecloses literally every consideration. I can lose everything else, but if I win this, you vote negative. Now, the next argument is ontology. The ontology debate is shitty. A couple responses. First is Pappas is wrong. Specific link arguments, historical examples, explanation of power functions, and cycle evidence all prove we're not sleeping. Claims well warranted ones and no, and P has no historical examples. Kentucky just shadow extends their mining and dapo examples, but don't answer the ace of civil society actually can use to produce ecological disasters, which means that these aren't wins. They're mystifications. And B, that small decreases in violence are actually necessary to maintain the overall genocide order of civil society and C is that I have multiple historical examples of the 2A and C outside of this that prove this and you should trust inductive reasoning. It's the same as evolutionary theory which says that there are a series of phenomena and these events have to be understood in the overarching theory of the explained and make predictive claims. We have been able to do that. It's sufficient to prove our truth claims on data point and also don't make me reinvent the will. There's literally hold if you cannot draw a line between the 2ER, 1ER, and 2AC do not evaluate any arguments on this now. The next is the snow group evidence and arguments. It goes conceded their response just in a Insertion in converse creates a unstable and violent forms coalition because they're based on contingent instances where interests collide and collapse when no interest normal converge. They have few implications first that they can see that this turns their spill up arguments because it means that movement collapses before they see something that's criminalizing indigenous people and the movement and B, it leads to biobanking as their wood 
of the loose says the logical violating autonomy would create the base for all basic things and single pyramids. They have access to large amounts of DNA information. One, this literally just says we have to judge our central part of the definitionally pathology as it justifies people aborting people with downs would be. Two, is you don't get new 1A or permutations. And three, is biobanks exist now as an assertion, but also proves how single pyramid becomes weaponized to get data now. B, support of this is two ACR degradation of token is the logic of don't tell white tell white people they're racist because they'll alienate them, which is violent as fuck, consumers get empathetic with you, Stephen and Sam, as two white people instead, you should refuse to even evaluate the affirmative that empathetic identification over determines if you think the app is a good idea. It means why it's a risk extinction, but that's entirely our point. You should be uncomfortable foregoing value in the future. And then C is they drop the one of our world establishments, which in turn only turns their Utah arguments because Utah is structurally always reverse settlers because genocide makes it they're always worth more. And so you should reverse the scales and vote for interests that do not align with that psychoanalysis. Their arguments are shitty. The drive evidence is already they have conceded Jacobs contextualization of one or this state reason about why we go against our own interests. This also turns the plan because it means that people won't get health care even if it's their best interest. Like an annual failure to achieve wholeness is the same failure to achieve health, which requires flash outs. That's our young evidence. Secondly, is this evidence 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 is literally neg evidence. It's a our contextualization about how over hundreds of years socialization produces an overarching ontological structure. Yes, things could change if socialization was different, but that would require a complete ending of civilization in the world, which they do not have solvency advocacy for, which now the framework debate, meta framework, if I win ontology, I win framework because fairness and education are just tools to make us better members of the settler nation state. This goes conceded. Furthermore, the process of an educated evaluation is inherently settled and colonial. That's the world of so you should refuse to evaluate altogether if I win ontology. Furthermore, their argument that clash or education is, our fairness is distinct from ontology is fundamentally false. We have arguments that contextualize into our unique individual psychoanalytic and experiences with one another means that this is not sufficient. Now, framework in the course come our hidden evidence. The only question is all will and villa. the word affirm a couple reasons they concede it's first the most real world. Secondly, is that it's a prerequisite. It's a sequencing question to evaluate fantasies. They've also conceded it's equally accessible because they would have to research their epistemological frameworks. They usually claim firstly, but it also resolves clash, which is able to test and compete against negative theories in the round. For example, their util or reformism good is all sufficient ground. Now, the last is education debate that methods of is pretty important. Now, the permutation proper, the argument that there's no response here except for a permutation that is clearly separate as it separates on a biobanks proves the settler mobility argument coming from the perm. They have also conceded all links to the perm, all links to the all links to the all links are also links to the perm. They operate in the same metaphysics, and that there's a rejection of the rejection doesn't make sense. I'm gonna go for two links. The first is futurity. The wills of history become the first native of slain. The best of futurity is not a fantastic goal with the future to come, but never the present time is not neutral, rather slays the native of his past, makes multiple investments in reality. I'm not gonna read the world of quotes here, but there's literally no answer to this type of a generic future is good argument, which is not warranted in the one AR. This proves the ways not only to define futurity in relation to civilization, noble only consciousness state of nature, which has been corporalized the body of the native, but it elides the fundamental stability of the heart of being and deferring a confrontational lack results in scapegoat in order to explain the instability. That's the two and C arguments about how people who are alcoholics or drug abusers become the causes of vectors of disease that have to be contained and pathologized as their cause. The next argument I'm going to go for here is the type, is the fantasies of extinction argument. They've conceded that the movements they create a rally around the point of a settler insecurity that is always alive and equivalates itself with native genocide and inability to articulate its ethicality. This fantasy of extinction equivalates white civilization with all of civilization and white humanity with all of civilization proven by their panelists and Armstrong have absolutely equivalent civilization and species with the entirety of the with the entirety of humanity. Now, the last thing is the alternative. It functionally goes to see the argument is that you should libidinally divest from the affirmative that its investments is particularly violent. That is the winter's evidence that goes conceded that this habituation over time produces a little empathetic identification with violence and settler being that should be rejected in favor of the alternative. We don't have to solve structures of power because our argument is about, uh, yeah, it's about libidinal investments.
Our impact outweighs theirs, though they posited a theory that explains some violence inside of us. This thing doesn't make it worse. They've conceded that disease caused extinction and the and the lives of everybody on the planet are foreclosed analytical challenges to settle a colonials, and they conceded that extinction is an ethical floor because uh, doing anything depends on uh, being in a literal me biomedical sense, not on being in some sort of ontological, uh, a mystical, and non-physical sense. All their only answer to this argument was the cross application of the Wilderson evidence, but uh, the uh, two and explanation of this just illustrates how tautological it is. Uh, being ethical is itself unethical. What the hell does that mean? It is tautological. Uh, it demonstrates that ethics is uh, just a question of right and wrong, which is the explanation that he gave in that uh, 2NC cross-examination, distinguishing right and wrong in itself does not, uh, is not a bad thing because doing things that are good is obviously a good thing. That's, that's kind of a truism, but it, it should frame how ludicrous their cross-application of this to justify a rejection of everything that's ethical is. It's the uh, logic of the accelerationist left-wing Trump voter who thinks that uh, doing everything to uh, doing everything to reject what is facially ethical is a good idea just because we need to uh, deconstruct the way that ethics currently work. Ultimately, their argument just amounts to we need to redefine what good and bad is in a way that uh, says that subtle genocide is bad. That is obviously compatible with our terminal impact argument and our impact is a prerequisite to fixing it, and additionally, single-payer contributes to that a deconstructive process. It is good, and they have not made arguments in the 2NR that are intrinsic to a single-payer, just laundry listed observations about the failures of past healthcare systems, which proves from a permutation solvency. Regardless, single-payer can solve extinction, which outweighs, but it also improves access to all kinds of medicine, not just Western biomedicine, as in single-payer only literally means that regardless of what healthcare somebody wants, the government should rearrange society's resources in a way that facilitates that. That does not require biomedical models. Empirics prove that a primary care providers already transitioned away from Western understandings of health and disease, which is the overseeing evidence. The uh, alternative is an ineffective way to accomplish all of this stuff. They conceded the Zach evidence, we, even though they answer the Pappas evidence. The Zach evidence has the discursive mobilizations about justice cannot cause material changes to uh, the uh, structures of power. Power is arranged materially. It is not discursive. Uh, the uh, fact that we describe a particular set of frameworks does not mean that we uh, automatically have the power to change. It only means that uh, we obtain the desire to change those things. But uh, the Zach evidence says that the only way to operationalize it is to assemble material coalitions and uh, accumulate resources under the moniker that you want. Regardless, Pappas is correct about his reading of power. The fact that they can make historical examples doesn't prove that they're uh, correct in terms of how power works. Settlerism itself is not an identity. You cannot be killed by a colonialism. Those are just analytical monikers that we use to dis uh, categorize groups of distinguishably violent acts so that we can theorize about interventions that uh, can reduce them. But people are most literally killed by not having access to a doctor, by global warming, by pollution, etc. They made this argument that the Pappas doesn't assume environmental destruction, but environmental destruction is not literally caused by value as an abstract notion or productivity as an abstract notion, but by a factory. And shutting down that factory literally takes carbon out of the air and affects the intensity of environmental destruction. Same thing for disease. It affects the uh, biomedical intensity of all those things, which proves that their uh, analytical sweeping assertions don't disprove the veracity of the case. They made this inductive reasoning argument, which is their to and only other justification for ontology. But the difference between uh, their uh, theorization and evolution is that evolution is falsifiable. If you named a bunch of counterexamples to evolution, you could prove it wrong. Their theorization is unfalsifiable because they folded all of our counterexamples into their overarching narrative, that they're just deviations within the uh, system. But that proves that their overarching narrative isn't actually that causal. And the way that uh, settlerism really identifies itself is that it is negotiated on an individual basis. When two people interact with each other, uh, they uh, might be informed by particular notions of uh, what a settler is and what a colonized individual is, but uh, that all, all percolates individually. That is proven by all of our empirical arguments about the uh, veracity of, uh, about the effectiveness of interracial coalitions and uh, settler and colonized coalitions, uh, shutting down things like oil and gas, which they conceded, and, uh, which they conceded example from the noise gate evidence, the no dabble movement was able to temporarily halt a, a construction of a pipeline. The fact that it ultimately failed does not prove that the structure is fixed forever. It just uh, means that that particular movement was ineffective within its particular geopolitical, uh, within its particular social political arrangement. That the fact that single pair, they have no, the fact that they have no reason why a single is bad proof that a single pair would be uh, another method of escape of disrupting that framework to me. We get to weigh the estimation that they are uh, linked to uh, disprove the desirability of the plan. That a benefit is clash which outweighs all their impacts at a theoretical level. Clash is the process by which all the benefits of the debate are operationalized. We gain the most in this activity, which means that if we win that they heard that dialogue from us, you should vote affirmative on this alone. They dropped our a link to the clash. They said there are infinite components in the one to see. We can't be prepared to defend all of them as abstractions. And when you uh, abstract it away from the plan, as they uh, can get offense based on any word phrase or method or pronunciation that was used in the one to see. That's proven by their permutation argument that it is severance to uh, reject a bio. Uh, it is a severance to reject five banks, which is like a random four-point word in one of our cards. Uh, again, a competition of that standard is obviously ludicrous. We can't defend every single uh, philosophical assumption. Ontology does not mean that you went framework clashing fairness or intrinsic goods. I uh, sort of explained uh, uh, that conflation above. They say education is settled and colonial. They have no evidence that says all education is irredeemable. They say it's real world, but they offer no word for what that's the case. I'm not going to answer it. They say it's a prerequisite. Ask yourself what the reason that UNR gives for why this is true. The affirmative does not need to interrogate an ontology to solve disease, which was uh, done above. They also don't solve clash. The fact that we can use the K uh, to clash abstractions against each other doesn't solve clash. It's Specificity clash needs to be optimized because it's, an, because it's an intrinsic good that was done above. They say uh, debating their arguments is important. We're cool with their arguments. They just have to be uh, a link to the plan. The biobanking the bio -banking link argument. They have no evidence for why a single player would result in biobanking. Our ethical model does not result in biobanking because knowing your genetic code is an in individual advocacy. Coalitions are effective. Their interest convergence are an effective argument. Does not uh, does not presuppose the immutability of clash. We read a piece of day evidence that it's phenomenal. It says that the interest convergence that would be formed after a single player fundamentally uh, changes the constitution of what that is because it uh, causes coalition groups to develop iterative experience and uh, in engaging repeated 
institutions and building trust with each other, which reduces the incentives that affect single parents fundamentally different because it affects a nation that is accessible to every single person. The a psychoanalysis debate, uh, the Johnson evidence says that there are conflicting libido drives, that, uh, the, the Johnson evidence says that there are conflicting libido drives that doesn't show the case because the vast majority of people would still get health care by people who have insurance in the status quo. They say that when people fail to achieve health, their costs lash out. We read a piece of evidence, Evans evidence that says the people's behavior is not determined by psychological drives, people's behavior is determined sociologically, which means that it can be overwhelmed by a change in the distribution of power. The uh, permutation debate, uh, the, uh, all, the all of our people debating on the ontology debate also disproves that the permutation debate is not severance because the fund doesn't include by a mix and it's not an intrinsic element of our action. The futurity arguments all uh, presuppose the ontology debate, which I did above. It's not unethical to defend futurity, and our argument about futurity is not about uh, securing the total stability of futurity, which no one's the vast majority of their arguments about a settler insecurity resulting in lash out and a genocide. Our argument is simply that a preventable death should be prevented because it's an ethical axiom that people should take care of each other within societies that have the resources to do so. Audio is now on. You want the first? Audio is not on. <laughs> no, it is. Oh, it is? Okay. So I'd like to shout out the chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hello, shout out to there the wasn't chat. originally going to be a chat. We lobbied for it. We lo for the people. <laughs> uh, secondarily, I'd like to shout out my mom. I'd like to shout out my dad. Shout out Darius again. Really crucial. Uh, I'd like to shout out Jasmine and Taylor. 4 1. Only drop from some suspect shit. Uh, I want to know who else has a shout out now. Cool. I'll shout out Nico. Oh, okay. Well, shout out to my mom, my dad. Everything I do is because of you. I appreciate it. Shout out to Rachel. Incredibly supportive. I love her. She's my girlfriend. She's great. Next argument I'm going to go for here is shout out to Darius, obviously. Uh, you know, an amazing partner. I miss him. Wish that he was here with us. And I know that he's with us in spirit. Coach Darius all the way. Coach Darius 2018. Uh, also, you know, shout out to Jacob. He really gets that shit done. This one in R was particularly impressive. You got to see a good side of him. And uh, finally, shout out to the 337, 504, 318. You know, uh, shout out to the 405. I'm not from Norman, but I uh, feel like I should give it some a hit now. Also, hey, shout out to George, George, George Lee, Ellis, Stephen Ellis, amazing administrator, supportive all along. He even got us in the tournament hotel this time. He did get us in the tournament hotel. Fuck yeah. It's a new thing. Uh, you know, shout out, shout out to the elders who uh, paved the way before me. Shout out to Dr. Reed Brinkley. If he was talking to the camera. You know, <laughs> he was too before, so don't make it seem like I'm just crazy. But anyway, shout out to the no, fans, the people. Uh, love you all. I'd like to repeat again, if you need coaching, lab leaders, anything, our emails are both at the bottom of the thing. Okay, uh, position is a 2-1 for Megan for one point. Um, I sat. <coughs> uh, I think there are two major things that influence my decision. Um, the first is alt solvency. Um, so I think that uh, I kind of agree with the app that the, the impacts that you're describing uh, are ultimately material consequences. Genocide uh, is a material act. And I'm not super sure about the, your claim that that act is intrinsically related to some libidinal investment. Right? And I think the difference between saying something like, the sun comes up every day so I can be sure it comes up tomorrow, is that that doesn't imply any reason about why the sun's coming up. If I say the sun's coming up tomorrow, because it's driven by the death drive, like, well, that's a huge leap. So saying, here are all these examples of the way violence has happened, does not prove a theory of why they are happening. It does prove that it is likely to happen, but their claim is that it's likely to happen in a material fashion. And so why is it that my libidinal divestment from that thing would make those material structures stop happening? You have to win that those things are caused by a libidinal investment. And demonstrating that something empirically happens over and over does not demonstrate a theory of why it happened. It only demonstrates that it happened. Can I ask you a question real quick? What do you think is the distinction between providing a theory for why something happens over and over again that can make descriptive? Because there could be lots of different explanations for why something happens over and over again. 
So my question sure. is, what is their what, can I just, I'll, I'll give the rest of my decision, and then we'll let the other two judges talk to the team who lost about why they lost, okay. and then I'll answer any questions you have, okay? Um, so that's kind of my first uh, general frame, is that I'm not sure why voting NAG or libidinal divestment actually solves the impacts that you've described. The second thing is that I don't think you've actually contested uh, the affirmative's claim that extinction is inevitable from disease. And there are a lot of threads that could be pieced together uh, for why I could question this, but really ev every single app speech, they just start and say, hey, everyone is going to die from a disease. And every single speech you start with, metaethics or ontology or something like that. And at no point did I really think that you just said like, hey, like we're, we're not all gonna die from a disease. Like that's not true. That's not a thing that's going to happen. Um, and so in my mind, it's hard to go for like a critique of the extinction reps when you're not actually questioning whether or not that thing is a real threat. And you have to just keep saying like, hey, diseases are going to kill literally all people on earth. And it would be pretty easy in my mind to challenge that and say like, no, they're not. Like, not every population on Earth is going to be killed by a disease. Sorry, like that's not true, but you need to like say that in my mind. Otherwise, you're not contesting. The thing that the app just starts every speech with is their framing is like, this is a real existential risk. We think that single payer makes it less likely to happen. You have some turns case arguments, but they're turns case arguments without uniqueness that are like might, some people might not seek care, uh, but none of that could possibly mean if extinction's already going to happen now, um, it doesn't really take that out. Um, and so there's various sort of components that I think you win, various link arguments and turns case things here. Um, but a lot of the sort of conclusions that you draw, where you're like, okay, now that I win this, I win the debate, a lot of those are just sort of statements. They're like, okay, I win this metaethics thing, I win the debate. Why? I, I could not possibly explain to them why you winning metaethics means they win the debate. I actually kind of agreed with the 2AR uh, framing of it as, as tautological. It's like, okay, I have no idea what constitutes goodness and badness without framing genocide. I guess I'm assuming that genocide is bad, or can I, because I don't know what's good or bad, um, but it's probably bad to exterminate people, but even if I can't determine that, or I can't determine it without the prior condition of genocide, I'm not entirely sure how these things flow together, why would that mean that it's not bad for all people to die? It's just like this whole thing just proves, at best, it's like a giant presumption argument of like, no value could be determined. Or you must be saying that you have some other way of determining value which I don't think is the conclusion that I draw, or if it's true, I couldn't explain to them what is the way that you get to decide what value is, but they can't decide what value is. I, I couldn't possibly explain that in a way that didn't feel tautological or circular to me. So it seemed like you're saying that genocide is bad. Why is genocide bad? Because people get exterminated. Genocide is bad. People get exterminated in a world where <laughs> they get exterminated by the app. It just, the whole thing seems circular. I can't really draw a line of like, okay, Metaethics, therefore nothing, therefore everything that the app said is a reason to vote neg. I, I literally can't explain why that would be true. So at the end of the day, I don't really know why voting neg solves your impacts. I'm not super sure about the app solving their impacts, but I don't think that you've contested it quite as directly uh, as they have. And I really just feel like this debate would be a lot different in my mind if you just, if you just started by ridiculing their case. If you had framed this around like, look, they're freaked out about this threat that's not really a threat. You keep kind of saying that you're like, they only really mean that they want to protect white civilization. These are like really easy lines to draw to act, to be like, look, there are a lot of populations on Earth that are not going to be killed by these contagious diseases. The, if anything, it only spreads because of globalization, which proves the link that this extinction argument depends upon a conception of Western civilization. There's a lot of those lines that could be drawn, and I just didn't feel like that those lines were there in such a way that I would feel comfortable looking at them and saying, you have no AF, your disease impact is fake. I, didn't, I just didn't think the 2NR ever made that particular claim for me or applied uh, why your framework arguments would mean that. So. I'm gonna, I just have two questions for you. The first Do you mind just letting them get their decisions first? And then I'll happy to answer any questions. Which one is it? You and me? You and me. Okay. Okay. Um, I think a couple of just major arguments about like the questions of metaethics and everything else. I am fairly persuaded by this Wilderson evidence, and I really don't have a great answer to it in the 1AR, even if necessarily in the 2AR, until I'm getting arguments about like how it's tautological and circular and everything else. But I don't really get 
a warrant as to, well, one, how you're able to challenge these systems of valuation, because that's essentially what the card is saying to me, that we create values so that we can say this is a good thing and we can then protect white life at the expense of other people's lives, in this case, genocide and like native lives and everything else. If that argument is true for me, then I believe that your claims of extinction is bad, we have to make sure that we protect people, still lends itself to their larger meta-ethics and their critique that they're going for. If those arguments are true, then I think that I give them some credence to a lot of their examples of how lash out works, and I think more specifically questions of like how these coalitions operate, because I think that's ultimately like a net benefit or one of the more the, the more particular solvency mechanisms that you're going for in the debate. And I think that there's a head on like how you lead to people getting either pathologized or how there's just entropy convergence there. The two major examples in this debate, one is like oil and gas mining, and they're able to say like we were able to get rid of those things so that we can have resource domination. I think you can be like natural gas is the example of that. Right, like that, that's just a leap that I think you can take. Obviously we have conversations about warming other, earlier in the debate, but like I don't have anything great there. And I don't have a why oil drilling wasn't, well not necessarily why it was an example of it, but how it operated. Does that make sense? Because you're not necessarily saying that like we solve for drilling, but rather that like single payer is a system that allows coalitions to like coalesce, et cetera. And I need that internal link. I need that warrant about why those things are true. Rather- Sorry, which internal link? of how single-payer coalitions would then challenge the system of valuation, settler colonialism, et cetera, right? I need that large, I need that internally, especially because like in the 2AR, you're also like, DAPL, uh, it was short-term, it wasn't really effective, and I don't really have that, okay, well, what do I get out of this? A couple other places where I think that this is also true is there are questions of empathy. I don't have almost anything at all in the debate about, the, about those arguments. Right about how groups start to come together, we start to see violence, we see death in certain bodies, and then we use that to help justify whatever our previous actions are, which seems a lot like the Wilderson claim in this debate. Right, it's like, oh my gosh, because black people are dying, we have to do something, we have to start saving people. And if they're right about the Wilderson claim, then we're really only saving white life at the expense of other people's lives. What part of the two NR said that? The empathy stuff? Yeah. I got. I know exactly what you're talking about. Are. I know exactly what you're talking about. You want to like? I don't think that was an answer. Yeah, because I wrote it, th like I wrote up my whole AR, and the third thing I said after the youth thing was voyeurism, not based on evidence, not using people's lives as a platform. We think it's good to advocate for the resolution of preventable suffering. They cause ethical localism. Settlers would never care about settler colonial violence. That's bad. And then like, two and R doesn't say stuff bad. Um, I think even if you're right about the empathy, and I'm going through my clothes, the <clears throat> best example of this in the debate for me is about alcoholism, and that's definitely in the two and R. And that's definitely not answered in the 2AR, right? Of people being deemed as alcoholics, blamed for their own, I guess, alcoholism, and then, right, we have to scapegoat them, we have to exclude them, we have to contain them based off of that. And if that's true, I think that is an example of how the empathy operates, right? Like you only care about them because, oh my gosh, they're diseased, they have right, a problem, but then you're able to exclude them because that problem implicates everyone else. I think you should go back to the autonomy debate because I think you're ahead there, and I think that kind of dictates how both of those flips work, well, how both those arguments work for me. I think the other part that's kind of interesting is the daily conversation, right? Because obviously, right, you're, like, you're going for extinction and everything else. And I think ultimately about the 2AR, you kind of back away from like your claims about like not only how we, well, not necessarily how we justify extinction, but rather how the values of extinction get used and how they get operationalized against other people, which is again, I think the example of like alcoholism, et cetera. Um, then I think it's a question of like framework and the plan and everything else. And if I am all, well, actually I'll say this, your 1AR evidence, I'm kind of sympathetic, um, yes, 1AR evidence, I'm kind of sympathetic to the fact that I believe that that's a bad card. Right, that it says that we have to look at system, larger systems of history, sociology, and even like how death is operated before before we can start to make decisions. I think that if that card is true, then it kind of undercuts a lot of your offense for framework, as well as the offense that you're trying to go for for like the extinction claims. You look, you're about to ask me a question. Yeah, so like, <laughs> I, I feel like that relies on an understanding of sociological interactions as equivalent to systems, which is an internal link that I challenged and was kind of a thread that was present in a bunch of your discussion earlier as well. So like, what did you do with the kind of discussion of how, like what it means for, like there was this 
top, you know, discussion at the top of the 2AR about the Pappas card that was like, systems of power operate in this way. When you say settler colonialism kills people, it really means this, this, and this. Like, how did, did that? Is the Pappas card the 1AR card? The I just want to make sure. No, that's, that's the first card I read in the Right, TC. and so that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that the 1AR card becomes right. a I, piece of tension for the offense that you're going for. Okay, for the but the 1AR the card doesn't talk about so like the one ER card talks about social interactions affecting how people behave. Like we can agree that social interactions affect how people behave and that without saying that those are overdetermined by systems. But right. that in order for it to be a med card, it would have to say that. And that's my reading of it, that it said that systems of history and death and other drives have determined our social history. Hmm? What is a system of history? Like if historically white people have killed other people, that did, that dictates how people relate right. to each other. Which is a thing that I talked about with the Pappas card and the relationship between, like, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like, what did I you definitely get you. I'm saying that those two pieces of evidence okay, fine, but contradict even, one another, and I give them the okay, concession fine, that even you bra were wrong. Even bracketing the question of that Evans card, what did you do with that discussion of how that shit works? Like, About how we can make changes to things? Like, that, yeah, like, the, 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 the like counter theorization of how settler colonialism is violent. About how there's nothing we can ever do about it? Just like, no, I, I just like, want to make sure I'm answering the right question. The, thing, it's still like the, papist card, the thing I said about card. the Pappas card. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think that you have to win that single payer in this case. That necessarily changes systems of disease, but rather like the systems of valuation and the meta ethics that they're going for in the Wilderson and Lisa and I think that if they're able to win links to how those coalitions operate, and if they're able to win examples of how people become pathologized to that, then it proves that you have not changed those social relations, and instead, those have been part of the system of history and everything else that I kind of got the reading from your other card. Their examples prove why single payer is not good for certain people, and if that is true, then you have played into that system of values that they've said protect some people over no, others, no, you, which then you, yeah begs the question of like how you solve all. No, 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 yeah, no yeah. it begs the question of the impact debate, which was grounded in the thing about value, yeah. which like yeah it impacts insolvency, right? right? But like, the, the question of single pay, the question of whether single payer is good or bad is separate from the question of is extinction, you know, a good value. I don't necessarily separate those things in my mind. How do you determine if something is good or bad absent ethics or values? What framework do you use to evaluate the impact of their links? I use a framework that says that if native bodies are killed based off of whatever system it is, then I should not prefer it. How, what's your reason for that? Uh, the Wilderson piece of evidence saying that we norm, Wilderson as well as Daly saying that we protect white children, white life at the expense of native bodies and that we should question that system of valuation. Okay, whatever. I, no. Sure, fine, okay. Uh, for me, it was less about uh, kind of alt efficacy and really who did what and uh, material implications so much as the ethicality that would inform an affirmative ballot. And on that front, I kind of uh, agree with Sean that the Wilderson evidence is uh, not treated like it should be in this debate. I guess maybe one way of thinking about this that might lend a little bit of clarity is that I'm not invested in figuring out a system of ethics that works by the end of this debate so much as I am a prerequisite question of you know, is a ballot for the affirmative team ethical insofar as it is driven by, or you know, is the ethicality that informs it dangerous? And if I think the answer is yes, then outcomes are a little bit less important than, you know, whether or not my, you know, my ballot can even do that. I think that like all of the kind of, uh, the prognostications at the top about extinction being inevitable and single payer and all that kind of stuff sort of play into this you know, pretty rudimentary claim that's in the, the Wilderson evidence, just about all of this being based off, uh, you know, kind of uh, making all other bodies uh, kind of, you know, subject to what to, to white civil society and that sort of thing. So I think just like a more, way more explicit answer to this in the 1AR that kind of got it out of it, because to me it's also sort of a packaged framework, a framing argument that goes along with the link that kind of makes it so that, you know, there's just a necessary condition for me for, to vote for the app uh, that you all do, uh, do not satisfy. And so for me, it's just kind of a, uh, a cut and dry debate in that way. And I think resituating some of this, uh, the, the kind of like, you know, the tautology stuff a little bit earlier in the 1AR, uh, but also just kind of, I, I don't know, addressing this argument more spot on in the, 1A, in the 1AR and talking about, I'm sorry, I can't really concentrate because you all are just shaking your heads. Both, both of you said this thing about how the tautology stuff is not in the 1AR. Like, I, I didn't say I'm, I'm also very surprised that you don't think ontology stuff, like we're dropping Wilderson because like, I have this whole like two minute rant about ontology that I 
right? It's like Snell group, Noise Cat, Pappas, all those cards in that structural theory of ontology. It's like we extended all of them. But and right. the, the tautology thing itself, I, like, I wrote the following words and said them. Yeah. We did not concede Holderson. Begs the question, what is the opposite of ethics? It is still unethical to let people die if they want to live. Their thing depends on a tautology of vague terms like ethics and value, which cannot be defined in relation to something else. That was cross -ex. I said those things, and the two are extrapolated on that. Like, what was missed? I, I, I didn't think, I, I, I had that, the one AR. I just didn't think that, like, uh, again, that kind of comes back up to the top of my RFP, which had to do with, do I need to determine a system of ethics, or do I just need to decide if the one that I'm using that informs the decision for the affirmative is good or bad? But how can you decide if it's good or bad unless you determine a system of ethics? Uh, it's, I mean, they said that you actively pathologize certain bodies and blame them for the things that happen. Why I, is that and, bad? Huh? Because Wilderson says that certain people are protected and other people become pathologized and killed. So oh. you did decide on a system of ethics. That's, that's, that's a system started. of value. That's, like, yeah, that's well, why right. it's not called, called Right, out. and their alternative isn't about creating new systems of valuation, but rather presumption that we should no longer invest in those systems. That does not make any sense for the reason I just explained, which is you all voted on the Wilderson card. That is a system of value. Like, there, there, can, there are, like, sure. reasonable... You, you have to like, like, I might be, I might be parsing some ethics a little bit, but, like, what you're saying... <laughs> yes, like, I think that... There's not a logical... I, I get you that, yeah. sure. There is an implicit valuation in my, like, decision. I get that. Yeah. But they are ahead in my book on the examples of the ontologies that are presented in the affirmative, whatever, right? right? So, like, that lead to death. death. Your ontology thing makes sense to me. Like, if you evaluate the ontology based on what you do, then that structurally makes sense. But like I don't get your thing that is like I don't need to come to a system of ethics to figure out if the plan is bad. How can that possibly be true? Because I mean, like I can know that an ethical decision is the or one decision is the wrong one without determining a global system of ethics that says that informs every single decision ever. In this instance, uh, you know, voting for an affirmative that's based on uh, an ethicality that's informed by the clearing of land is bad. I don't know what's ethical in every other instance, but in this one, I know that that's one thing that I can't vote for. That's the framing that the two and R is setting up. All right, sure. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Did hey, you want to ask me a question? Uh, so, two questions. On context of this value argument, yeah. do you think explaining it more in context of empathy, it's not just like the concept of like calculus is bad, but because of the nature of settlerism, that the way in which you interpret value, so like the concept of weighing extinction, the concept of diseases affecting everyone, that kind of one affirmative ballot signifies, it's over-determined by the way in which you're situated in the world. Do you think that would, so in that yeah. instance, it's not just like, because yeah, that, I feel like your ballot's kind of like, value is very abstract of a term. So it's yeah. hard to, since it's so abstract, it becomes topological, because it's like, do we weigh ethical systems? When Wilson's claim is really, conceptions of value rely upon presupposed clearing for kind of ethicality to emerge, right? So argument's not just like all ethics are bad, but that the way they kind of theorize ethics. Yeah, a particular system evaluation that the affirmative has used in order to say why their app matters is problematic. And so just say that, that. like what, what is this actually, whole thing about like, you're, you're just losing me a little bit with some of the, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I guess I just interpreted the two and I'm just saying, like, yeah, and that, that's kind of what's happened. We just piece these together in slightly different ways and understand yeah. these arguments well, differently. I think, based I think on like the distinction between the word ethics and ethicality maybe was something that kind of. Yeah. Anyway, you, you, you had a question for me, so. Yeah. Um, so another way to articulate this, and it's how the way that I think of this argument, but obviously I want to know if this is palatable to you, right? Is that uh, ethic? First, my per my prayer of the question is how familiar are you with? A, a little bit. Okay. So if I was to say that ethics or value is kind of lodged in this symbolic system, right? Like the symbolic order, like socially determined, over yeah. the place, et cetera. Yeah, it's not, right? it can't ever be like universal sure. in any fashion. If the response to that is that genocide is not, right? genocide is a structuring principle, is not in the symbolic. That it is a, is in the real and beyond language, it is transcendental which is why it structures value and ethics. It is, like, for example, you were like, why is this? Now you're losing me a little bit. I just. That's fair, yeah. cool. I just wanted to know where your understanding goes in terms of the Lacanian warrants for that argument. Not, not super far, I guess. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's, yeah. I totally understand. We'll yeah. probably have you in the back at some point again. Just wanted to see where you were. Yeah. Throw something out for y'all. Yeah. Where's the falsifiability bad cards? 
Oh, word. Uh, where the fuck is that? I cut those because of you. <laughs> That's their entire strategy. Is you can't prove anything. How do you know that this is true? And you have, you have, I know you have cards that say that that's fucked up, right? That it assumes that your science isn't good enough, that your savagery, etc. That's what's happening in this debate because that was the entire process. Word. Is them saying where are your examples, and then they were like, "Fuck you, we don't need examples." Yeah. Also, like falsifiability only makes sense within like a a, a dualistic ontology, right? Like. There has to be a, an external world, world that I verify against, right? If, if, every, if all value is like produced via some other relation and there's not like an objective external reality independent from the way that we interact with it through the symbolic, then what does it mean to falsify things? Or, like and stuff like that. My last question to you is a little bit on this like sun is rising argument that you were talking about in terms of like the old solvency, right? Like, if someone, I guess I'm unsure of the kind of comparison you made where you're like, the death drive drives the sun versus like libidinal investments as an explanation. Like, isn't the idea that like libidinal drives and the social psychic system causes all of these historical impacts? Why does it cause them is the part that I think I don't. Like, is the explanation about like the pleasure principle and the drive just like not there for you? Does it need more? No, I, I mean, like, A, I just didn't think you explained that that much. But even if you were That's to make fair. that argument, this is an argument that in general I find tough. Just because it's like, you're making an argument that some underlying, like, yes, maybe falsifiability as a concept relies on some other, some other assumptions, but if you want to then deploy a theoretical explanation, that you're like, the world works like X, right? Th this system makes X happen, you're now making the same sort of claims that if you want to critique like falsifiability, not a thing, then you also don't really get to make causal arguments. Well, like I guess my question is, so you can't kind you, of like they, walk into this worlds. argument that you are where they're like, you know, the difference between evolution and ontology is we can cite a bunch of examples to disprove evolution. And my argument for that is like, yeah, so could you for ontology, right? Like. Is it, what is the distinction between this two at the point where I'm like, yeah, you could cite a bunch of examples to disprove ontology. That's the burden of you as since we have cited a bunch of examples to support it. Could, could you really though? Because like yes, no, no, like in order for it to be uh, to be falsifiable, if we want to accept that as a, as a premise at sure. all, right? You have to formulate a statement that could be proven true or false. So here's your statement: genocide. Genocide is structured by the death drive. Prove that false. Okay, couple okay. things. I guess you could say, one, the death drive is not real. How? Uh, clinical tests, laboratory tests, theories that Lacan is wrong about linguistics, uh, psyche. Why do those disprove that claim? Like, like now, now you're proving that your claim has claim? to make a broader set of other assumptions, right? No. Right? Because so you're saying that in order to win your argument, you have to win that Lacan's theory of ling linguistics is true? Yeah. Yeah, and they haven't disproved. They haven't read a like, Saucier's wrong, a linguistics card. They did read cards to answer the death drive. The Johnson card? The Johnson card is not answer the death drive, it's pro-death drive. But anyway, even if that's true, the card is not like, Lacan's wrong about language. They didn't read a card that was like, hey, signif linguistics is wrong for Lacan. They even could, then, even right? then, you have to formulate that as a state. Like, Lacan is wrong about language. What does that mean? It means that he's wrong about like literally everything. But, but like, no, formulate that as a statement that is provable or disprovable. Okay. Okay. Signifiers operate in association yeah. with other ones in order to formulate meaning. How is that provable Can or disprovable? Can I just reverse this? Yeah. Like this whole this thing is, is circular. This is, a, this is well, like, get out of that system. Right, right, well, no, I win. think you should critique all of that, right? Like they are then forcing you to have to do all this extra work. Your examples aren't good enough. Your clinical arguments aren't good enough, right? Your examples will never be good enough in that world. And in this debate, I, I felt like at least you were ahead of the examples, but it came down to, but fuck you, prove it. Which is part of the debate now. I'm like, I'm not, you're not wrong on that. I, I think the better part of that is just apply that to them, right? Like you did that at one point where you were just kind of like this lot, you know, apply that logic to them. It's like their statement of like, okay, here are a bunch of examples Right? Oh. In, induct, in, induction doesn't have to be deterministic. It is inherently probabilistic. So you're not saying, like, these examples have happened, therefore 100% this theory of the world is true. You're saying, here are some examples, therefore the most likely explanation for that is this theory of the world. Right? The standard of, like, you must definitively prove it, this is a deterministic shaping of the world that absolutely explains how it works. Like, yeah, there's just, there's, there's no, there's really no way to do that for, like, a lot of reasons. But there's also no way to establish most of the claims that they're making. You're like, how does single payer solve disease? Can you prove that definitively? 
you've given some examples of instances where single payer made you know, people more likely to get health care. Does that prove that in every instance there's an underlying theory that explains why single payer solves it? No, it's like that logic, it, rather than trying to prove that your theory is true, just be like, our theory is the most likely explanation of why this violence is happening. They can't prove anything either. Here's why you should think that we both have probabilistic explanations of how the world works. Here are reasons why mine's better. That's fine. Sure. It doesn't, we don't have to get too in the weeds on all this shit that I'm, I'm gonna have trouble following anyway. At least for me, just the more you can make it simple like that and just kind of be like, look, they're full of shit too. Like the times, the times I find myself voting neg on, on critique arguments the most are just when you just prove that the app is full of shit. You're just like, here's why all the stuff they're saying it's like, you're not gonna definitively prove some theory of the world and be like, okay, 100% this theory explains the world, therefore you just vote neg because the app can't explain anything. But you just prove like, look, they're full of shit. The impacts that they're trying to portray are probably not real. They've constructed this fantasy of everyone dying from a disease that is never gonna happen in order to justify making a system evaluation. It's like, you have all these pieces, but for me it's just like, they didn't quite come together in a way that said like, the app is wrong about the thing they said in the 1AC. Instead it was like, the app causes a bunch of other problematic stuff that we have cards about. And if you just combine that with like, and there's no reason to accept the validity of like their extinction impact or the claim that single payer solves it. Now that, that's, that's like the only piece that's missing for me. As soon as you connect that and that becomes clear, then it's just like, now I'm just voting on a critique of their extinction reps and saying that their app was bullshit. That, that I can get behind. That that is that is a two and R that makes sense to my to, to me. But like, the more it gets, the more abstract that it becomes, the more likely it is that I'm just going to interpret things a little bit differently than you are seeing them. And the more it just becomes like, here's here's a straightforward like their thing is bullshit. Sure. I can get behind that. Cool. So. Yeah, it sounds like no one's saying everything. <laughs> right, like that's debate. No one's gonna prove shit in two hours, right? No one's gonna prove any theory of the world.